Welcome to Wednesday Comics. Brought to you by RootsOfTheSwampThing.com and Supercon 2018 Return of the Con. Keep turning those pages. Welcome to Wednesday Comics. To my left, we have Blitzen himself. Alex, how you doing? Hello, Hello. everyone. Is he the best? Bluetooth? Blitzen. Oh, Blitzen. I did not hear said. Blitzen. I heard, yeah. we got Blitzen. We got blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Already I'm drunk. fucking hot. I told you before the show started. I'm melting over here. And we, to my right, speaking of melting, Frosty himself. How you doing? Garrett? I'm actually Frosty. I'm doing good. I feel super chill. You know, we're at this nice restaurant, so it's feeling fresh. Waiting for that fucking beer from yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, get and your shit together. I am Marvin, your Krampus of this Christmas, and I'm going to go Krampus on this fucking Jimmy to come back with these drinks. We're at a restaurant right now. Like last year, we're having our Christmas party, the Wednesday Comics Christmas party, second annual Christmas party, if you can hear uh, Jimmy clanking the dishes in the background. Uh, we didn't get as much budget this year. Last year, we had Steven. Steven messed up a lot here about Alex's drink. I remember that. And Can't that's why he's gone. We put it in a word, and he's gone. That's the power of Let's comics. <laughs> uh, but now we got Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, Vodka on the Rocks. I might get fucked up. Who knows? <laughs> Jimmy, I want to Chuck Norris as a drink, and I like the bow tie. Corey, once nice. again, was supposed to be our waiter because he is our servant, but he's not here again. He's too busy uh, <laughs> sleeping because he's got to go work out at 4 a.m. Uh, <laughs> hey, tell me what's not accurate about this statement. Um, to be fair, I'm waiting for you. It was probably 4.15. <laughs> <laughs> Off by 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are going to talk about some holiday issues today at the end of the show. That's our feature. Stick around. Christmas time. Holiday time. There's even a Hanukkah story in there, too. We'll talk about Hanukkah. We have our regular reviews this week. We have uh, DC Metal number four. That's a big issue. Right? That's a big issue this week, right? Everything else is like... Metal normal. number four. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I mean, that's one of those books ish. that actually getting back into it. I know, I, would we'll talk, say, I know we'll talk about it later. Hey, it's supposed to be a summer event. We're so into it. I, I would yeah. say it's a big deal. Mm. Uh, I didn't go into it thinking that, but... In all honesty, that was one of those books that, in hindsight, I should have put something else on it, but I know it's a quote-unquote big deal. Next week, we're going to talk about like the end of the year and wrap up things. So, uh, But actually, speaking of wrapping up, we're going to talk about uh, some of the best uh, single issues of the year. Really, I wrote them down throughout the year, issues that really uh, stuck with me. After I would read one, I would write it down, because otherwise, I would not remember. You know my memory. Steel trap. Uh, one of them, Saga 42, Alex. Yep, I remember. That's actually on my list. Petri, R.I.P. That's that's not even the big thing that got me. It's That's the fall that Atlanta takes when the spaceship takes off. Let me run through these because Batman's on here five times. Yeah, I've got, I've got four Batman. And yet, I do not know what any of these are. <laughs> I didn't write down anything with Batman 21. Do you remember what that was? Yep, that's the button. That's the first one with the button. reverse oh, yeah, flash really coming oh, in and beat the God, shit out so of Batman. Good. That was a great issue. That was on my list. Batman 24. Yes, that's the proposal to Catwoman. Oh, that was so great, too. That also on my was list. Was that Frank of Villar? It no. was Matt uh, Garrett. No, Mitch Garrett, yeah. Really? Yep. That's pretty know. great. No, no, no. It was David Finch. No, but it, it was like it was it was like watercolors. I thought it was his cover was David Finch. I was pretty sure it was David. I'll Gitch. look it up here in a second. Batman twenty seven was also on my list. You remember? Uh, yep, that's Kite Man. First one of Kite Man. Yeah, that was really great too. So it's thirty. Thirty five. I have in here. Oh, I had thirty actually on my list, which was the that's second Kite round Man of Kite two? Man. That was great too. I also had. Uh, no, not 31. I had 33, 34, and 35. Yeah, that's I got those 34 for sure. Oh, 35 was the last one with Catwoman and Talia. Yep, fighting great. it out. And then I have, um, well, spoilers about that one. This week's 37. On this yeah, list. I would say 37, 100%. Nope, not 37. Loved it. We'll I, talk about it later. Old Man Logan, 25. The start of... Uh, Maestro versus... Yeah, yeah um, you guys talk about it just for a second. Yep, Ed this. Brisson and uh, Diodato's art. Yep, that was good. That was a good start. That, that was, was a great good pickup. For, I mean, wherever we're at now, that was still awesome. I have to admit, that's one of those books that this I mean, at least uh, Scarlet Samurai has taken kind of a dip. I haven't read the last issue. I don't know if you had, but I'm oh. hoping it does pick up. I actually had Saga number forty six. That's the uh, issue with the abortion from uh, Elena and Marco. <laughs> and then I also had uh, the Batman Who Laughs number one. Because I tell you that what, was that amazing. was that's good call. Oh yeah, that scary is shit. That is the Joker, one hundred percent. Like Max, crazy. Like I imagine that really would be Bruce if Bruce 
Would have been poisoned into Joker. Uh, Batman 24, David Finch. Was it Finch? Finch? That, may have been the, that may have been the best it's Finch, the best though. Finch. Yeah. I think I actually remember texting you guys being like, I don't believe this is Finch, but it says Finch. So it's very different from... Well, then I, I apologize, because that really was amazing. That was an amazing Flash issue. 25, what was that? That was the next issue of the button, right? Yeah. Maybe? Possibly? So. To be fair, I don't know. Black Monday Merge number three? Yes. Interrogation. Uh, you guys don't know about this, but that stroke number 11 was a one-shot in is that Chicago. The one, is that the one with um, the creep? Um, no, it's about him getting rid of guns in Chicago. You got one thing to say about that. Who cares? Um, it was excellent. To be actually, fair, I, I, I try not to diss you too much on the death stroke. I, 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 li- I love that character. I think if it's I'm, just not written the way I want. If I'm remembering correctly, I, uh, so I wrote that down after right after I read it, and then I think actually this summer it got nominated for single issues. Oh, really? I know what's good. Nominated, but didn't one, win. Uh, bullshit. <laughs> Two, this, this next year. Like I said, Suicide, Suicide Squad got nominated and won awards. So. Speaking of knowing what's good and you guys don't, Superman 28, also on my list. Nope. Is that Superman issue 28. history lesson? Yeah. The one where there was more text than pictures and... Uh, well, come on. You got to learn some time. You know, there, but it depends on the issue. There are books where the issue's got so much writing in it and honestly doesn't bother me because it's, it's good content. I tell you what, reading that history book really did kind of bug me. Seeing it took these. me out of the book. I There's something about it and I think it really touches on the aspect of Superman that he is this like god basically to people but he's looking up to these people who sacrifice their lives. That part of it got to me. That part of it be him being like, no, these, these guys are the heroes yeah. in that whole issue. So that well, he is a Boy Scout. So that, is, that part of the issue actually made me really like it. So I think that's why it's on my list. But those are the issues actually I like this year. Do you have any more? Nope. That was it? And whatever's yours? While you were looking up uh, David Finch for us, I was finished up what I had. I think so. When these, well, actually for me, the criteria was if I read one of these issues and I thought it worked on its own and it, some, it elicited some sort of emotion for me, I put it on the list. Like it wasn't because it was the end of an arc and I was like, bam, that art was good and on a good note. It was almost like this issue's good. Like I could almost be like, Give this to somebody and be like, if you read this issue, you would have a good time reading that issue. And that's the reason why it was on this list. Do you guys read the new issue of Mr. Miracle? No. Not yet. No. That one would be close to be on there. I am, I am about 50 books behind. I tell you what, though. 50. Speaking of books today, there's one coming up here that might be on my list right here. The line. <laughs> yeah, no. If you guys could see that. We're oh, doing, oh, hey, by the way, we're not doing a video for this show because we're recording this the day before, as Garrett called it, Christmas Eve Eve. And so right. there's no way I'm going to be able to edit a video and an audio podcast before this holiday weekend. I hope this will still go on YouTube as an audio only, though. So we know uh, Marvin's family like wants to see him on Christmas, so we gave him the whole day and, instead of just half the day. Yeah. So sorry and also, about that, but as a gift, and you can call it an apology if you want to. On Sunday, a brand new show is coming out that we've uh, debuting. So make sure to uh, update your feeds on that day, and you can get it. But if you don't update your feeds, and you're like, hey. How to listen to this on Spotify now. You can stream it on Spotify. It's exciting. Look up Wednesday <laughs> Comics and you can, uh, you'll can you see the episode there and you can stream it. Jimmy, I tell you what, this um, beer you brought, fabulous. Hey, you finally got one this year. I know. I'm surpri- well, Yeah, but that's, I'm not testing him for a hard drink, a beer. He can do it. I remember last year, uh, he wouldn't even bring you water. Nope. Steven. So thirsty. <laughs> He's out of here. He was so thirsty last year. Uh, before the show started, uh, we had some uh, dinner. I had a nice... Uh, uh, Eight ounce steak, prime steak. It was so eight ounces. It was like butter. Hey, he you ate too he much. D- he doesn't eat like you and Listen I do. To me, that a nice side salad. I had some uh, Yukon potatoes, Sounds and then horrible. to end it, a nice raspberry sorbet. Wow, mm-hmm. that Damn. is one. Uh, I had what he had, but twenty four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I'm just having a liquid diet. Had a smoothie. Garrett, I mean, uh, Alex is trying the uh, Soylent diet. That's all he eats is Soylent. <laughs> Jeez. Have you ever seen that before? No. You can, like, is this But you know what the best thing is? I can laugh at something and you know what it means. <laughs> Hilarious. So sometimes you're not actually laughing? No. How? I got asked by someone that I work with, because I usually generally ask someone, hey, what are you doing tonight? And uh, this person goes, oh. You haven't asked me what I'm doing lately. I said I don't actually care. Ah, snap. I do care generally, but it's just one of those. Oh, if we had the if we had the fucking bell here at dinner, we could be like Ding. boom boom. Psh, don't mention the bell. It's the uh, time of the year, and I um, oh. I cry when he's not around. No, I like to t- I like to mention the bell for that reason <clears throat> exactly. Uh, six zero five two one five eighteen forty nine. I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me where that bell is. 
Uh, I did watch the there video. There is a reward out there for you. There was a video ransom that was sent to me. And, There's uh, a bigger reward to keep it at bay. There was a voicemail <laughs> sent to us also with a ransom, but uh, you can help me out. This is just like happy. I need my uh, sacks. Where's he at? I wish you guys could see Marvin's face, the, sa- the pure sadness in his eyes. Question about your story you just told. Did yeah. you say you don't care or the person told you they don't care? I told them I don't care because I'm the oh, one who wow. asks, what do you got going on tonight? I hadn't asked for like two weeks. And she goes, well, that's, that's a turn of events, right? Because normally learn, nobody cares about you. So like. uh, exactly. I, just was, I was just realizing. <laughs> Why would you that. give up your uh, facade? I, we've just been so busy that I thought, you know, I'm not going to ask. You're just I'm, like, fuck it. I want to tell you how bad I think about <laughs> kind it. <of>. That, <laughs> like, that is shit. the spirit of Christmas inside Alex right now. Um, he l- loves every person on the earth. Uh, <laughs> He's like the Grinch <laughs> in reverse. <laughs> that's the weirdest laugh you've ever made. That's evil uh, laugh. I know. To be fair, uh, Jimmy's nailing on the, the booze, so I'm just, I'm just doing it. Hey, hey Jimmy, why need to cut him off? Can you bring him on one of those sorbets? RootsofTheSwampThing.com, your definitive source for all things Swamp Thing. Holland Files number two should be coming out pretty soon. If you got your pre-order in, uh, you should be expecting to see it pretty soon. So visit the world of Swamp Thing at RootsofTheSwampThing.com, on Twitter at DC World Swampy, or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash RootsofTheSwampThing. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about some comics that came out this week, the week of uh, 12, 20, 2017, right before Christmas, like I said. Get these, all these books. We're going to talk about something. One of these books that you can give to somebody on Christmas Day and be like, hey, it's a stocking stuffer. And that book is <laughs> The Defenders, number eight, Brian Michael Bennis, David Marquez, and uh, Justin Ponzer. This is uh, Kingpins of New York, one of uh, the last issues by, Mike, by Brian Michael Bennis. Good cover. Everything in between those pages, uh, go ahead and use that for to start your Christmas fire. I'll tell you I, what. Yeah, I that tell is you definitely what. coal. You I give that you to what. a child, they are going to cry. It's a have, little harsh, but I, have, I mean. I have no problem you sticking this in your stocking because I, I really did hate this issue. I, sure chocolate doesn't matter. Yes. I did not enjoy anything in this issue. Usually we can read a book and maybe I won't like it, but I'll be like, yeah, the art was good or like that one thing was good. Uh, the art wasn't good. It was rushed. It looked as David Marquez, we know his style. It's kind of like a cartoony, like solid lines, colorful, very rough. I, I, like I was telling you guys before the show, I believe that uh, they were like, hey, we only got two issues. They're going to come out pretty soon. Uh, rush Phone it, it in. <laughs> yeah. Rush it out. Uh, it seemed like Deadpool will be around for longer, but I guess not. He's around for like the last, ish- last I issue. I thought he was the worst part of it. I thought he was he in it far too long. Yeah. Oh, right. no, don't get me wrong. I was happy when he left. But you would think the big deal they made about him coming to the team, that he would have been around longer in the story yeah. than him not doing anything. Yeah. He didn't do anything. Um, what else? And then we get the origin of Kingpin for one reason. That's and, and the art, shittier. And the, and, shittier and the art shows I like that. Actually, before. I like that art. It's cool. a different style, but it's from Powers. Powers, Mark McMenus was doing Powers. That's that style. But it was unnecessary is what I thought. Oh, I see. It definitely was a style like it did jar you. It's not like it's a very different style, and so it's very simple compared to uh, Marquez's style. So I thought I don't know why it, it was slow. Like, well, I don't know why Marquez couldn't just do it me because he was so behind already on his original stuff. But it see, just seemed like something they could be like, oh, we need to fill up pages. Oh, when you put the origin in Kingpin, like there's no need for it. Yeah, so there's no there's no point Kingpin in this. Um, you already re- if you're you're more than likely already reading Daredevil. There's no reason for you to have to find out his origin again. And the whole issue, they're just in the alley. They just aren't talking yeah. about anything. I don't no, they're mind talking about who the hell Daredevil is. Last issue, is. they were in the alley. And that's what pissed me off. Is who gives? Why can't they just let it go who Daredevil is? Other than the fact they go, well, we can't trust you because you wear a mask and we don't know who you are. Yeah. Then when he finally shows them who he is. It's just knowing that this is one of the last three issues. It feels like this story is not going to go anywhere before it ends. And yeah. I know you said we have two more, and you said you're going to drop it. Yeah, Garrett's going to drop I'm it. Gonna and think Alex, I'm going to lock it in. He's going to keep the time. rest of them. I am right. When I read this issue, I thought about that. I was like, what's the point of me in these last two issues? I know nothing's going to be wrapped up. Yeah. But it is only two more issues, like at least to have the whole thing. But I don't really think that way. So maybe for me, it doesn't That's make sense. That's what surprised me. He, to be fair, Garrett, I would assume, is actually going to cave eventually and go, you maybe. know what, I might as well get him just to finish it. Because that's my only, my only thing, is why I only get 80% of it when I could just get the whole thing and be done with it. Yes, I may hate it. Two, it's never going to show up on this list again for us to talk about. But if I don't get it, I'm going to be mad. And then at the end of the issue, the hood shows up, which is a character that Bendis loves. He was in New Avengers all the time. Uh, bringing him back. I mean, that, never seen him before in my life. And you I never was seen so, the HUD? I, uh, I was so 
I was like, okay. The Hood was like a major bad guy in Marvel for like the longest time. He was in um, that uh, New Avengers book by Bendis. And, yeah. And he was the main villain in New else. Avengers for the longest time. See, that thing I didn't like because they assumed that you knew who he was. And I was like, no fuck. Oh, I knew, I knew who he was. I just didn't care. I think that was the reason is that he used to be a big guy. And they're, oh. they're like, oh, he's back. And I was like, hmm, don't care because A, you're introducing him right before this book's over. Yeah. Uh, B, I never liked him before anyways. <laughs> he wasn't a good good character. Actually, he was annoying. Uh, the way he talks, I hate him. Um, and then it just is like feels recycled because Bennis has done it before. Like, what else? Um, I, I saw him was like, what else do you have to tell Bennis? He literally, literally was around for like three years in your story. Yeah. I think he did enough. But that's what it feels like that he's just recycling all the stuff to just finish the book and we're done. Well, I, get, I mean, he's got nothing else holding him to Marvel. Throwing everybody you've ever had. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Miles Morales shows up. This issue felt like that unfollow issue where everything just felt like it rushed and be like, oh, we got to finish this book. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, what was going to say? Oh, I feel like, though, Bennis is still a good writer, but he's, like, tired of this. You know, like, he's going to move on to he's DC so ready and to do something DC. new. He yeah. feels like he wants to do something new. Uh, the rumor is he's doing action comics. What do you think about that? We never talked about that before. Um, I'm excited because you know what he said right away? Like when you showed me an article, it's like Daily Planet, yeah. you know, Jimmy Olsen. Not you, Jimmy. I mean, you look alike, but no, you're not Jimmy, what do you think of this issue? Yeah. Oh, it's on your list of best single issues of the year? Yeah, go back in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like you said, it's going to be... Dude, you should be fired if that's your choice. Don't worry. We'll put the word in just like <laughs> Like Perry White and like... You know, I love all the nuances of Superman. Like, show me that. I want. I need to see that globe every fucking. I issue. guarantee not you an important writes. character. Um, <laughs> it's not called setting. <laughs> I guarantee you, if he takes over that book, he the Daily Planet will be a big part of that book. Yeah, I'd be excited because about that. you know Jessica Jones. Uh, and he did the pulse. The pulse, and, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, he wrote this stuff for years, so, and that's what he likes to write. So, I think it's one of those things that I would like to see Bendis in his prime. Because my I, I have that you know, new let's Aven- go back. I have well and I have that new Avengers book or series and I want to read it, but I'm hoping to see him get rejuvenated because I I tell you what, uh, Defender started out pretty decent, and in the last even two issues, yeah. it's really hit a, a a wall of shit. You can tell he just wants to have fun again. Like he's not having. That was fun. the thing. Yeah, Those first it, couple it, issues were fun. But really if he fun. if he's having fun, he certainly isn't sharing that with the readers because I did not have fun this issue. Well, here's what might have happened. At least we'll assume everything's speculation. We don't know anything at this point. He might have known those first couple of issues, and then he obviously started talking about DC, knew he was leaving, and was like, okay, well, I've got to wrap this up. So then that's why you get all like all this the plot things we've been complaining about. It's because he's trying to wrap up this huge story he was trying to tell, and but we didn't know about it. And then now it seems more apparent now because we know he's leaving. Yeah. So who knows? Like You can't really judge stuff on he's working on right now because he might be rushing it to get out of there. Or he knows that he has to... like has the DC exclusive contract and he needs to start working on other books at a certain time. I Plus suppose. he got sick. Oh, so he's gotten he sick. Hospital. So maybe, if, what, 16 days it sounds like? Uh, he's back in the hospital. Is he again? Yeah. He, is. Okay. he said he's okay, but he went back to the hospital. Well, so, I mean, I'm mean, i not holding, necessarily holding it against him. I'm just saying that I don't even think he's having fun writing this book. Right. He's just trying to wrap it up. To that's what I'm saying. There's a lot it, of so. things involved and it just turns out to be a book that's not even okay. It's a book that I don't even where want to see in my site right. again. Uh, it, was, it wasn't great. Nothing about reading that book was like, this is good. Like, there was not even a panel. I was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. No, well, I agree. Hey, I actually did. Oh, wait, no. The Fixer. I like the, the Fixer. That was I it. like the opening page of The Punisher. That was it. Beat the shit. Yeah. Yeah, Deadpool was the most annoying part of this. Uh, oh, he won't be able to anymore, but I was going to say, Bendis never write Deadpool. I, maybe that's the thing. I, I don't think Bendis writes Deadpool well. No. Not funny. And maybe one part, I know part of it for me is that Deadpool is so overused, and I think part of it is everyone loves Deadpool now because everyone thinks he's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Has really ruined my enjoyment of Deadpool. Yeah, that last issue, whatever issue was where Deadpool was in most of the Defenders issue, I hated that part, yeah. and then this kind of amplified it. So I give it a four. I give, I give it a five. Two. Hold, I tell you what, it is amazing when you guys give lower scores than I give. This might be the first time that we're all five or under. And two is like, hey, man, it was competent. But <laughs> like that's it. What else am I going to do? Like it, There were words I could read. There were words I could read. Oh, also. Oh, no, it wasn't this issue. I'm going to talk about it different. They actually, you know one thing I should do? I think I have actually, uh, let me double check if this issue. I tell you what. Oh, um, yeah, I like the lettering of this issue. It's really great. <laughs> When uh, spo- more, I realize more spoilers, and that's what the show is about. Is us telling you about the book. Um, Daredevil takes off his mask. Iron Fist may literally be the stupidest person I know. 
at least in this book. Yeah. When uh, Matt goes, I'm your lawyer. So you pretend to be blind? No, I am blind. Did you get bit by a radioactive spider right then and there? Daredevil should have beaten the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Going, you were the dumbest piece of garbage I've seen. And I can't see. So that's saying something. Right? <laughs> anyway. Let's move on to uh, oh, Sherlock go. Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil. Written by Jeff Lemire and art by David Rubin. I, I actually really loved this issue. So it, was, I. it was the best. I think great. it's the best issue of the mini. I tell you what, for a mystery, the whole time, Lucy, right? Yep. Is trying to find out, at least in this issue, um, where her dad is, which has been through the whole series, and who hit her in the head when she's back in the Hall of Hammers. And so she goes to talk to, is the, is the Iron Minotaur, or they just call her the Metal Minotaur? Minotaur. So she ends up going to is a hospital or insane asylum. I couldn't remember. I couldn't figure out which one it was. I think it's a hospital. No, they yeah they started the hospital or and like then a she goes back to the asylum. Then, yeah, goes okay. back to asylum. So she runs into a metal minotaur, minotaur and is talking to her and going, "Oh, you know, I thought you and my dad were worst enemies. Oh, we really were, but we had respect for each other." I was like, "Oh man." There I was a I situation you, that happened where Black Hammer saved a uh, metal minotaur who's actually like. You know, I tell you what, I yeah. would I would love that armor. That'd be sweet. I would love to be the metal minotaur, not get my spine destroyed, <laughs> right? By my gear. But. Jeff Lemire does something where he takes aspects of other things that have been done before, but it's so refreshing for him to tell it in, in this story that I never feel like it's retreading stuff I've seen before. Yeah. Like her, basically, if we think about like that amazing two my uh, Spider Man two Rhino suit. Basically, it's what she's doing is making a suit. A minotaur instead of a rhino, and but I didn't feel like oh I've seen this before. It just felt like it was more real in this story. Like she breaks your back. Like obviously it's dangerous to be in that suit. Um, and so and then we have oh that was the last issue you're right. But yeah, it's a great issue of seeing how she broke her back. Black Hammer helped her, uh, you know, rehabilitate, and he that's how she saw that she became good that way, or at least uh, was mad. And then at the end of the issue, oh, she goes, well, Dr. Frankenstein wasn't trying to hurt anybody. We were trying to save everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and you, she realized at that point that she's looking about this whole thing the wrong way. But why also? And then she, you know, the flashlight, she realizes that it's Dr. Frankenstein doesn't want her to go back and, because he's there. Yep. But also she's like, there's still something. Like, why does he not want to see me? She's outside the room. Like, why does he want me to find him? And so... There's an interesting mystery aspect to it, but also those moments with her uh, and Lucy talking. There's also a lot. Of, there's a lot of human aspects. Like it's very humanizing. The story of every single person that's been in this book gets broken down to you. You feel like you feel empathy for them as a person. Like the last issue we had, just too low, and we had his daughter. Yep. And you saw how that was a bad household for her to be in when she left. There's always something that's always like, fuck, dude. I still think about that boy. <laughs> and in the that first, kid. The, the kid in the first. Uh, the kid in the first issue. Yep, where he's um, stuck in that mechanical body. He doesn't want to be there. But you can tell that Lucy in this book is like definitely hero uh, quality. I mean, she's a great detective. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's figuring out stuff. And like, you know, the first two issues did set up like a mystery, but this one made it more of a mystery than any of them. Um, and it's pretty cool. I bet if we went back to issue one, maybe you see like a silhouette above that's kind of like that looks like Frankenstein and you don't realize it. I I never thought about him being where she had already started. Yeah, which is pretty cool. I mean, um, you know, she was assuming this whole time that that meeting was to help defeat the the, good guys. The good guys. No, they like he was planning to help save them. You know, we also know that he has a relationship with Golden Gale. So, uh, yeah. Great art too. Um, yeah, I thought Ruben kicked ass yeah. on this book. This issue looked. I thought one. This is probably my favorite issue of the three we've I had. I would agree. Yeah. So until Black Hammer returns. Oh, by the way, I get this issue of nine. It's really great. Yeah, I'm sticking with an hour. Oh, I, I can't too. remember what I actually gave it when I told you guys earlier, but a, a nine is. I love the lettering. Speaking of lettering this week, lettering this week really was uh, apparent to me because there was some bad lettering, but that letterer really should. Uh, what a nice year for that. It's. The way, like, you can tell the way people are saying words just by the way that they letter them. Yeah. And it's never, anything's never hard to read or confusing to read. And you never really notice bad lettering. I mean, you never notice lettering until it's bad and you're like, I can't read this. But that was great. I like that. I tell you what, uh, I rarely look at the lettering. I, obviously, I look at them. I have there was read. one issue this week that really I thought had bad lettering. So I'll talk about it when it comes up. Okay. By like, the way, 
Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I, I've been reading comics now with you guys for a long time. At least it feels like a long time. You've never noticed? But I never really look. Like, like I look like when you watch the you know Wolverine snick, uh, snicked or you watch the thwip. Yeah, I see well, those, the sound effects. Sound effects are more the artist, but the lettering is the letter. Whoa. What? <laughs> He's talking about the text and I, the word. No, I, know, I know, I know. But like Kill or Be Killed has awesome lettering because it's so easy to read. And like you'd never notice it because it's never been like, fuck, what does that say? Whereas or that the first issue of the flash where they're actually shaking the text yeah. so you can't read it. You that notice well? also like when there's a like a wall of text, I think what we're trying to say, people always hear say then think that we don't want to read. It's not that, it's that the way that it's lettered is so close and there's such a big chunk it's hard to read that in comic like, form. That sounds like metal this week, because that bugged me a lot. Metal's the issue I'm is gonna talk about. It has bad lettering. Okay. Because it's so so much information in one bubble and they're not evenly spaced, and that's part of comics is Realizing how to do the dial, you should. Yeah, it. I'll hold on. Be actually before you go there. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's we have one more issue with that, and then after that we have uh, Black Hammer Two is not coming out yet. There's a new mini, Dark uh, Doctor Star in the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows. It's gonna be another mini series that starts in March. So, oh, that's that. cool. Crazy. Do you, you think, think it's I, gonna be called Black Hammer Two? Like it's called Black one? Hammer or something. Rise of the Black Hammer. Black Hammer: The Return. <laughs> No. Oh, I was sick. This Sorry. dual narrative story set in the world of the Eisner Award winning Black Hammer series chronicles the legacy of a golden age superhero. An age crime fighter desperately wants to reconnect with his estranged son, who he hoped would one day take the mantle of Dr. Star. So I'm not I sure wonder if it's when. that guy in the begin- uh, that helps Lucy find the Hall of Hammers. Is this him? That looks like him. Yeah, the guy from that's on the park bench. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It could be. I'm not okay. sure. Uh, but that's well, that'll start in March. So. But you know this what? I'll tell you what uh, these extra books from Black Hammer's universe remind me of is Jupiter Circle, where it's just going to add it, add flair and, and add. And reminds me of Lazarus X plus yeah, 66. These books all, we were like, oh, come on. I just want to hear the main story. But they build the world so well. And these characters are so well defined that I don't mind reading them. Oh, no, I, I, I actually sometimes almost enjoy them more. Yeah. Because they actually. add that extra information or just they let me not forget the world that I've actually grown to love. It's a good story. I like it. So Get um, next we got Dark Knight's Metal number four written by Scott Snyder with art by Greg Capullo. Um, yeah, the other people, too. Um, this book is the fourth of six. Um, it's been about a month since our last. Oh, um, it's, I thought it has been. You mean since the last time we got an issue of Metal or right. the tie-in even? You know, tie-in, hasn't okay. it? Yeah. As a, I, I'm guessing a month and a half almost. A month and a half? It's been a while. Yeah. So the momentum is definitely slowing down um, because of that. And they do what they do that I think is interesting is to be getting like the first page. They do like a recap sort of because they know that it's been delayed. They added that page. I think that is uh, the first time I've seen a recap in a DC book forever. Yeah. But there's something that they mentioned that I don't remember reading. <clears throat> Which part of the and this? Yeah, it was. In the, I think it's this top part where they're talking about them fighting someone. How they all split up. Well, I understood, I understood they split up and I remember that. But it was like Wonder Woman and Fate and the girl are fighting something. I don't. I don't remember them ever fighting anybody. It was in that that last crossover that went through Justice League when they're fighting all the other. Yeah. Right. I don't. Did they win? I don't remember that. I don't even remember that reading. The Fallout that. starts in this book. Hmm. I don't think that. Did they win? I thought they just like buy time. I thought, yeah, they made it seem like they had beaten the Merci- Merciless and no. no Dr. After Fate battling escapes. with the Dark Knights and barely escaping with their lives, our heels continue to search. Okay, so they they didn't fight them; they just escaped them for right. the time being. Okay, see, like I misread that. When we this talk morning. about this issue, like this page is fine. This yep. lettering is fine. And now, this I think this spread. was the best part of the whole issue. It like separates explaining Barbados's yeah. that's function fine. In and the universe. Lettering is not only the actual font; the lettering is when to know when to separate it how far the letters are from each other, the sentence, you know, when to break up a structure. And, but there's some pages that I'm I was just like... The Green Lantern stuff, it's like faded. Oh, yeah. That's, but like these pages and like the beginning pages with uh, Batman and Superman talking, all the other Supermans, I was just like, it's too much? Yeah. And maybe... I know you open the first page and you're like, oh, shit. And it's exhausting because, at least for me, I know probably good like 50, 60% of it is not necessary. It's just flowery lettering and them talking about stuff being like how 20, uh, long time ago, all this happened and how, and I was just like, okay, I know you're trying to build like, this is more than it is. And this is the thing from Scott for a long time for Batman. He'd be like, this has been around forever. You just never noticed it. Um, 
but it's just like I okay, like you said, we haven't had the book for a month and a half. I don't know what the fuck is going on since the last issue. Thank you for the recap. They're H. trying, yeah, they're trying to get nth metal as a resource. And, and maybe it would, I would have thought of this book less if. Thank you for the recap page. The next page, I was like, I'm lost again. Mm. <laughs> what are we? And unfortunately, sorry, Sam, we got fact dropped by DC. First time ever that they confirmed that it's ninth Marvin. metal. Jimmy, go ahead and yeah, bring me the scotch. I can't. That's crazy. Why? Why would you just call it nine? I then? told you. That's because I told you. What did I tell you about that Deathstroke Eleven? I called it ahead of time. I call stuff ahead of time all the time. It only got nominated. Marvin didn't win. Well, I said it was good. <laughs> I, but yeah, I tell you what, I would agree with Marvin. Though. When you read nth right away, I did. I think know, of ninth. but why wouldn't they just say ninth? I feel like Too it was long. brought up in one of the other issues before, and that's why I brought it up. I always they thought, never de- have designated nth metal. You know, when we play that DC card game, I always thought when you had the um, Hawkman card, it was called ninth metal, and it's not. It's nth. I always thought it was ninth. Mm-hmm. So they clarified it is the ninth metal. <laughs> There are lower metals. They and just ruined one above it. it. They ruined all the metal. Have fun with your imagination. Not nine. <laughs> Not. Yeah, that three. was a hammer drop for me. Just like them, uh, Hawkeye's makes you see him at the end. Hawkeye shows. Hawk, Hawk man shows up. What's yeah. Hawkeye? Yep. Yeah. Hawkman he's, shows up. Uh, yeah, he's he's basically the. So they come up with a mythology in metal where um, universes used to be created. Um, to be brought into the universe and that there would be this dragon that'd basically be like the gatekeeper. If the universes were meant to drift to join the others, they'd go to what we've seen on the multiversity map. If they were too dark or too evil, then the dragon is supposed to destroy them, destroy them and reuse that energy to create new universes. Well, Barbados gets control of this dragon and instead of creating new universes, keeps creating dark multiverse. He just never universes. destroys them. He never destroys them. And so Barbados's new dragon is ding 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 Hawkman. And he's manipulated Hawkman to be the new dragon who is now also in cahoots with Barbados, who was his enemy. Jimmy, thank you. I um this the, you know the more we talk about this issue, I have to admit I give almost two shits about metal right now. Well, I like the mythology. I thought the mythology part was fun because, like, it's cool to see how, like, why we even have the multiversity map. So it's very information thick. Yes, um, the Superman Batman parts were pretty boring, and nothing happened. Hashtag definitely the dream not my thing, Batman. The dream sequence, like with Dream I- or was it Daniel? Not that. There really are two different Batmans. So there's this Batman, and then there's <laughs> Tom King's Batman, where he's like, "What's the one thing that brings you hope?" And he's like, "My sons." And I was like. Well, Tom Kings would be Catwoman. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'd yeah. be like, I'm going to go back for Catwoman. He's like, just leave me. Let me to die. And I was just like, oh. Well, this but, is obviously not in core. It's not but even, on parallel tracks there. But even if it was. Just this was the, supposed to be done before this. The way, before his, the way his face looks. The way, there's things. The way that Batman is in this book isn't Batman. And I get he's he's probably so tired. He's, of, uh, he's probably, so, gone. He's probably yeah. so tired of brooding that it's like, screw brooding. Well, 30 but, years, though. But when by. he goes, oh, my, my sons. I'm like. Yeah, I, I did don't, enjoy, I don't believe it. Did that. enjoy it, but I thought it was like I enjoyed it, but I thought it, it were explaining things too much. You needed more space, and I'm more of like excited for this to end and certain characters to be brought back rather than where we are now because it just seems like this series is a series that, like, I know I'm going to Disneyland, but we're in the car. And it seems like we keep stopping for gas and being like, "What the fuck are we going to get there? Yeah. And like, while we're going there, my dad's telling me stories of years past. And like, I don't give a shit. Let's get to Disneyland. Like, uh, I know uh, what uh, shows uh, up when we get there. I'm imagining uh, my dad is telling me the stories of Disneyland when he went. And it's like, yeah, that's why I want to go. The mythology and history in Disneyland. Yeah. And while it might be interesting if I cared, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm like, yeah. well, it's a little too much. Like, yeah. And I do like that stuff because I, I love multiversity. I love all that kind of stuff. I got that, uh, what is the source book? Yep. Whatever it's called that came out. Uh, I do like all that stuff and I liked it, but it seems like, I don't know, the way it's being told to me is basically like, hey, let's sit down. I'm going to open up this scroll and we're going to read yeah. <laughs> what's happened in the past. We got some cool things, though, like Starro, not dead. Oh, I love Starro. That was the best part. That was cool. That, that was, was funny. I uh, love Starro as a villain. And um, I think I'm so excited for all the spinoffs coming out of Metal that I'm getting pretty excited. Like, it's basically the Marvel universe that you want hidden in the DC universe. The art was great, too, in the coloring. Yeah. Obviously, Greg Capullo knows how to draw. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a seven, because... Yeah, seven seems good. I I don't think it was the best issue, obviously. And I think we need more 
happen. I think this should have been. It would have been nice if it all happened all at once, as opposed to spread like out now. One shots work better, or those tie-ins, because the story they're telling is more contained. And I get it. I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied with that one issue. Whereas, like, when I was talking about the single issues. None of these issues live on their own. Yeah. They're all like, we're getting to something. We're getting to something. I'm just waiting and being like, can we get to it? Yeah, let's go. This is one of those series, and I guarantee the last issue will be awesome. Oh, that, really? Average. Really? In all honesty, the last oh. issue is the one I think is going to be the weakest. Oh, really? I think they're I saving think, everything for that. I think five, we're going to hit the note, and it's going to be perfect. And we're going to get to six, and the wrapping up and the tying up is not, to me at least, uh, Scott's strong point. Oh, that last issue will be that, six bucks. Oh, it'll I'm, be don't surprise me. For sure. Mark my words. The issue, whether that's the next issue or the issue after that, that Plastic Man comes back, that'll be the issue that's great. Agreed. That'll be the issue where it's like, boom, stuff's happening. Plastic Man's back, and Hawkman probably actually comes back. Well, yeah, one uh, of the tie-ins is going to be called oh, Hawkman hey, Found. Black Adam shows up. Yeah. That was cool, too. I like that. And Kendra turns into uh, Lady Blackhawk instead of uh, Hawk Girl. Is, is Lady Blackhawk already an established character? She's yeah. in charge of the Blackhawks, which are like a... Yep, the, the military group. group. So, right. I get that. I didn't know if That's Lady That's the Black... evil version of Kendra. Well, I mean, it still is Kendra, though. Okay. That's the thing. But it's it's not a character that had already been established. No. I it's, thought there was one. There might have been in the it past. Lo- it but... looked like one of the talents. It looked like Strix. Right. Yeah, there's Lady Blackhawk. I I bet there's Lady Blackhawk, but it's not. It's never been Kendra. No. Kendra oh, okay. Saunders. Okay. So. I was going to say, on the Blackhawks, I'm pretty sure there's a Lady Blackhawk. Yeah. Which usually I thought was just the captain that happened to be a lady. It was. There's all, a bunch of them. Natalie Reed, Zinda Blake. Yeah. Oh, and now Kendra Saunders. <laughs> I uh, I'm giving this a six, not just to be because I want to yeah. be lower than you guys because it, yeah, it bugs me when you guys score lower than me. <laughs> yeah, I think that. But I, there's I more really, potential. I really didn't care for this issue. I read it, I was like, oh, it's fine. But there have been other issues like two and three. I thought were actually pretty good. This one's like yeah, looked good, but it didn't read well. So, hey James, what do you think of uh, Sherlock? We never asked you. Six out of ten. All right. What about this uh, DC Metal? 10 out of 10? All right. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> God. I don't know what we got next. Hey, bring one of those steaks again. I'm hungry again. Yeah, uh, you only had eight ounces. <laughs> <laughs> the Mighty Thor, number 702, by Jason Aaron, Russell Dodderman, and Matt Wilson on colors. This is the... Uh, so the last issue, even though it was 701 Mighty Thor, we only had uh, Balsog fighting the uh, Mighty... Mighty. Oh, that's right. War Thor was fighting Magnog. Yeah, Magnog. So in this issue, we get Jane again. We get actually some Hercules. We get some. Uh, we Odin get some uh, Odin son. More importantly, you know who else we get? Some Odin. Yep. And Freya. Freya. Odin and Freya come back after all these issues. They come back and say basically, uh, uh, boys are back in town. So basically, we're taking over. <laughs> basically, this issue. I like how Freya says the boys are back in town. <laughs> so I would say the last year and a half worth of content coming out of this book could have been skipped and then just done this issue. See, I've liked the, this the, book, but the only thing that no, you're I get- like the book. But I mean, like there was a lot. It's like you know, Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z Kai, whatever. When they had basically cut out all the bullshit that last year, and all the was tie-ins all that have slowed this book down. Yes, I agree with that part. Right. Of it, but the main story overall, I tell you what, Garrett, this is one of those books that I actually think you need to drop. It kills. It. No, you- I like this one. I like this issue. That's what I'm saying. I'm just so bitter that I had a fucking Minotaur for eight issues that I had to deal with to get to this point. Eight was like the minimum. It was like 15. Yeah, it was 17. a lot. It was a lot. Um, I, I really like this issue a lot and the fact that it wasn't all fighting. This is one of those books that actually the, the story being told was nice. Mm-hmm. It was good to get this information. It was good to see Jane stand up to Odin and tell him, hey, old man, shut your fucking face, motherfucker. Yeah, that was cool. Like, um, And it was cool that Odin's son was in there too. And yep. when he was sitting there, like being like, "Are you sure you want to do this? Like, this is not going to end well." I like that he's in the book. Like, that's how that should always been too. He, like, I know he's not Thor, but he's been Thor for forty years. Well, he was, well, he but was it, captured. But it makes sense. Uh, I mean, he was. He what was, do you mean he was captured? In one with Earth Thor, he Unworthy. was captured by the Collector. Do you remember he was captured he's for like years? Yeah, but ever since he's been back. Well, that in the unworthy, unworthy Thor. Literally, he leaves after being told that it's not his hammer anymore. Gets captured for all that time. So that's that's in, in the story. That's where he's been this whole time. But the one, I mean, I don't mind Odin's son um, not being in it for the fact that if he feels unworthy, he wouldn't want to make an appearance. So even if he hadn't been captured, 
he feels so shitty that he doesn't belong to this. Yeah, I would agree with that too. But literally, he was gone. The first issue, they show him walking away from Lady Thor, gets captured, and then he gets the ultimate hammer. He lets it loose, and then fucking Volsack picks it up. So literally, he's been captured the whole time. Yeah, that's the reason why he wasn't around. I I I, I do like him back in this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is nice. one of those series that I'm, I'm glad I'm still staying on. I um, I like whenever Donnerman's on it. Great. Yes. Agreed. Anybody else gets on it, it just feels like that brings it down a little bit. I think he, he has established himself as the Thor artist for me. And I, I tell you what, this cover Rubik. is amazing. The cover's pretty great. The coloring, Matt Wilson. Uh, lettering in this issue, great too. This, I love the lettering in this issue. Because once again, even though there's, sometimes there's a lot of dialogue, I think it might be like the way that it's spaced. It just, you can read, and it might be also the art. It just, this, it's more readable. Like when you have Odin Sunday and all that stuff, and it's broken up that way. Yeah. So, man, you can tell too that Jane is so close to the end. And at the end of this issue, she, she collapses from stress. That could be her death. Not really. Well, I think a part of it is that her body's never healed at all. Yeah. She's always been Thor. And she mentions that in this issue is that I haven't stopped being Thor in, it sounds like months, I'm guessing. And so even Odin's son goes, Shouldn't you be on Earth doing your chemotherapy like you're supposed to? You're a doctor. You know better than this. Yeah. And she's like, no, the realms need me to do this. I need to fight for everybody. Yeah, the realms in disarray. And I could see it's kind of like having that busy work week where you're like, I do all this shit. I don't have any time to do it. And yeah, I'm barely holding on. Um, and we see at the end that Mangog makes his way to Asgard. Yes. He's on the Rainbow Bridge. Right yep. I did not realize that uh, Heimdall, is he always colored like that? Is he always like space in the yeah, shape yeah. of a person? Yeah. Even in the movies, his eyes are like that. No, I get that. I know his eyes are weird, but he doesn't look like he does in the book. I've never noticed that before. Where he looks oh, yeah, like... they don't look anything. He doesn't look anything like the movie. Oh, though. yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Where he looks like stars in space. That's like his head. So, it, I, I thought it looked really cool. Yeah, yeah. In the movies, they try to make it more realistic. That's well, he's got to be a person. I mean, he's got to be a person. Uh, I really liked it a lot. I like the... Um, idea that this storyline is about mighty thor maybe it's the, you can think of it two ways maybe jane actually is going to die i don't think that's the case i think it's the death of mighty thor because she's finally going to be realized that she needs to let it go and heal herself and we'll get on to sun again but it won't be like her giving up it'd be more her uh giving it away back to thor well, it's her stepping down yeah it's her going it's her realizing I need to, she's done enough yep now it's up for odin's son to Go beat the shit out of everybody. I really like this issue. I give it a nine. It's good. I'm going to give it an eight. I, I'll go with Garrett. I give it an eight. I love the art. Don remember when he's on it with yeah, Matthew Wilson. That was nice that there was like no other artist. That was just him. The nice thing about this book is that it has been, it seems maybe it wasn't actually delayed, but it's given Donovan the chance to actually do the book. Right. Instead of going, well, this needs to come out every month. That's the only thing with this legacy, and I wish they would have established before it started was that being more consistent with your artist because when you do put somebody else on this book, it does suffer. And I know Marvel had that thing a while back that they said that people don't buy books anymore for the artists. I don't think that's true. And DC obviously doesn't agree with that because they're new uh, Dark Matter books that are coming out out of metal. They're all It's their master focused. class that yeah, they even it's, call it. it they're, if you look at all those books, the artists are first in the book. Yeah. So like they're, that's basically their, I would say, Middle them, being, them being like... Artists still do matter, and they're going to sell these books. Yeah. You know what book actually has nailed it on artists every issue, whether from the first, 15th, I'm sure the 100th is going to be amazing, is Batman. So we actually have Batman 37, written by Tom King, art by Clay Mann, and colors by Jordi Belair. Uh, I don't know what to tell you about this book, guys. This book is just phenomenal. It's, yeah. it's like the best f- friend book of the year. With their girl. I mean, like, so last it's the issue bro book. Was like, them, was oh. Batman and Selena, basically Selena was telling him, hey, you need to talk to Bruce. Uh, no, yeah, no, you need to <laughs> no, talk to, to Clark. Clark. Uh, he needs to know, like, you haven't told him that we're engaged or to talk to him at all since we've been engaged. And Lois being like, you need to talk to Bruce. And the whole issue is trying to convince him and they eventually wind up in the same place and we're like, hey. And they beat up, uh, was it negative and double negative? Sure. No, yeah. Mr. X and double Whatever it was. Yeah. To be fair, I've never heard of those characters. Yeah. I think they were new. That's all okay. infantile. That is whatever. Uh, they beat him up like in two seconds, and they're like, "Hey, you want to go? Go, uh, go, 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 go to eat? Uh, PC? What do you call it? A bite to eat. 
<laughs> yeah. bite to eat. And they go off as this issue is them going. I don't know why when you're like, hey, we'll get a bite to eat. You go to the fair, but it sounds like it was a suggestion. Thing. Oh, okay. It sounds like, like a Selena and Lois option. Well, he was like, it's really a Clark do. thing to do. Be like, let's go to the fair. And he'd be like, yeah, come on, Clark. Because he's like, the one in Smallville was fun. And then Bruce nobody like, likes mm. the fair. I'll tell you that right I now. I love the fair. What about, episode, what about issue seven of Superman? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's why they went to go the fuck fair. yourself. You know what? Actually, that's probably why yeah. he went to the fair with his son. He had a good time. Well, he brings up that it was in Smallville. Yeah. The thing he just literally Anytime told you. That guy no, brings but I up didn't Smallville. Know. Hey. Jimmy, keep the drinks away from Marvin. Uh,. <laughs> So it's them on a double date. They're going to go in and they're like, hey, yet it's superhero night. Can't come in unless you're dressed up. So they come up with the idea they're going to switch costumes. Which, A, this is an Alex moment, but what fucking fair would be like, no, you don't, you aren't in a superhero costume, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Yeah. They're dying for money. <laughs> they bugged me, also bugged me. Why can't they wear their actual costumes? Well, because it's not, it's not fun that way. Because you don't want to be recognized. Somebody would recognize Yeah, them. as the actual person. Someone would. They look the fucking same. Nah, no, they don't. Batman's got stubble. Clark's clean faced. Clean shaven. And he's got the hair. Clean yeah. faced. Yeah. And he wears the. Uh, when he's wearing the Batman costume, he's got glasses on over his cowl. Yeah. So it makes I, it even yeah, look more right. convincing. I suppose so. right. Um, I think that was the best part of this book. It was so funny, but so cool, too. Like, because you know, there is that trope. Everyone's like. Superman looks fucking exactly like Batman. Like, they're the same. They look the same. And then this is like, no, they don't. Like, they look the same. They might act very heroically, but they're very, they're two very different people. And um, so are their uh, special ladies. So they go in, they have a double date. It's a lot of them talking about the relationship. Lois is uh, talking to Selena about why do you like Bruce? Like, what is it about him? And uh, Bruce and Clark talk about how she's a criminal and it's basically Clark trying to get over that part of it. Being like, why do you like her? She's a criminal and you're against criminals. And he basically tells her. They both actually say. Well, it's, it's even Bruce talking to Clark about why Lois. And Lois, or an, an account woman asking Lois, it's more why about Clark? Bruce, yeah. It's more about him being like, Bruce, why her? And he's like, well, well it's, it's the same reason why you like Lois. And he explains it to him in a way that he's like, you're right. It's the same reason. And for him, they're the same. For Lois and Clark, he says they're so different that they get along. When he, but Bruce says when they actually Bruce and Selena at one point were like when I fall he catches me when I fall she catches me so they rely on each other in that way and I think it actually it's a good issue that it does something different we get a lot we get Superman and Lois in this issue but also it's still dealing with that same thing of Catwoman trying to in a way uh, tell it kind of meta in a way telling readers being like trying to justify to real, readers being like. Why would he be with Catwoman? And this is them him explaining the same thing as Superman. Because I guarantee you, some people read this book and be like, "There's no way he would be with Catwoman." And Superman's asking the questions they would ask. Yeah. And by the end of this issue, Clark's like, "All right," like he understands now, and he's like, "And Lois is like, I better be at your wedding," and she's like, "I, I like the chemistry between yeah. the two. Like, it's cool that Lois and Selena. Like, I don't know if in comics they've ever even talked to each other before. And, and if they now, did, it's probably like an Elseworlds. Now tale. BFFs. Let's say yeah. there's a Real joke friends. throughout this issue. That at the end of the issue, I said, of course, and it made me laugh, was that they kept saying, uh, I should really pitch for you and see if you can hit the ball. And uh, Clark's like, there's no way you can hit the ball. John can't even hit that ball. And Bruce is like, I got it. Just, I know I can hit it because he can only throw it so fast before. I loved. I, <laughs> he's like, he's I like loved, calculating on I yeah. love the science for And they this. go throughout the whole thing. He's thinking logically. He's like, no, nope, I'm pretty sure I can hit it because of all these reasons. And even when they're on the Ferris wheel and they're not even by, he's not even by Clark, he's still talking to Lois, or talking to Selena, being like, I th- I'm pretty sure I can hit it. Like, <laughs> and she's talking about other stuff, and he, they're still thinking about it. And Clark's like, there's no way, because John can't even hit that ball. So there's no way he's going to hit that ball. And at the end of the issue, the last page we get, uh, Superman throws the ball, and Bruce knocks that shit out of the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell Superman's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, A lot of like cool comedy in this book. That's what I mean. Like, I think it was, it was like, very subtle. It was fun, but also like it meant something. This yeah. whole issue. It wasn't yeah. just a throw issue that I'm like, oh, this issue was fun. It really did cement, and this issue keeps cementing the last one with, with Talia. They, people keep saying, why her? Or they keep asking her, why him? And they keep having the same answers, and you, it really is establishing, no, this is not just like a fling. They're not having a moment. They really are in love with each other, and they're really going to get married. I tell you what, in issue 24, when uh, Bruce does propose to her, even building up to that, I'm like, God, I just, I don't, Calman is not my choice for Bruce. Right. And I tell you what, in the last 20 issues, she is totally, she's she's the right woman That's for That's what Bruce. I mean. I think 
when it first came out, there's a lot of outcry being like, there's no way. Why her? Uh, I think it's just a publicity stunt, all this stuff. And Tom King since then proves over and over again, no, these two, it's the real deal, and they're going to get married. Now, we he's making me, he might also be establishing that because I guarantee you some dark shit's coming. Yeah. And uh, something might happen where they can't get married. Like she might die or something might happen where... It makes you, it you know the the one thing that, a random occurrence that at least I think Garrett you might know is that when you play Arkham City I know I'm getting off topic, but when Hugo Strange is talking to Catwoman as a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist, he says you um you love Batman, that it's not even one of those th- a random occurrence that right. she likes Batman. It's not a random occurrence he likes her. Well, there's this the, is something that yeah. has always been built up. There's a lot of mediums but where... But it's never been... It has been, but... Gotham, I think, they're even doing it on that TV show, even though it's like its own universe. I the animated we, series, they've t- dabbled oh yeah. in it. He, o- oh, he always... Yeah. They, they love each other. It's just never a spoken right. thing. Where now Tom before, King is taking the jump to do it. They love each other, and yeah. they're going to talk about it, and this is going to happen. Right. I think before, and we talked about this uh, a couple of issues ago, was that at that point also before, I think it's been more sexual and been more like a fling, and he always... It doesn't work out because she's a criminal. It always turns out that it doesn't work out, and he always go back goes back to being one woman, and then then you fifty two with uh, Superman. Superman went. To, oh no, that was different. He always goes. It's Wonder Woman usually. Yeah, because it doesn't work out with Selena because she's a criminal, and I think this is just him showing that uh, they're both done with what they've done before, and they really do like each other, and it's making it cementing it more as a stable relationship than it ever has before. Um, I really liked with Clayman's art uh, when they were doing the love ride, the water ride, and it comes out and Batman, who's Clark, and Catwoman, who's Lois, like they're sitting nice, like, you know, a nice couple would, and then coming around the corner is uh, Bruce and Superman's outfit, and then Selena and Lois's outfit, but Selena's like straddling him. <laughs> just like, well, that, that's where that sexual thing comes back, yeah. though. She's, actually, she's a more sexual in nature, though. It shows the difference between uh, both couples that Clark's like the good yeah. Boy Scout, obviously, and then Bruce is, uh, he's a knight. I tell you what, uh, that, I don't, I've, Bruce may have had a little bit to do with that. Most of that did seem like Catwoman. Yeah. Just like, fuck this, this is dark, we're going to do yeah. what I want. Um, fun book. I wish Art that Tom King was doing a Batman Superman book. Just Batman Superman. Oh, I would get, I, I, you know what the one thing about Tom King is he may be the writer of the feels for me. Yeah. Every most every issue I've read in the last ten issues has been some way or another. Grab, it just makes you want to go like fist pump and you're like, yes, it just it makes me so it good. makes me want to just like hug Tom King going, dude, you are writing one of the best books I've read in a while. Mm-hmm. And I realized at least you and I were like, I'm not really digging He's finding this. his groove now. He's, I, he's just, yeah, I love all the dialogue in this book. It all felt, nothing ever felt like, Ooh, that's writing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's some things you read or watch movies. I've talked about it multiple times on the show, like hateful eight, Quentin Tarantino. Every time I watch the movie, it's like, that's Quentin talking. I can never believe it's a character's talking in that issue. It definitely feels like Bruce, Bruce it definitely feels like Selena it definitely feels like Lois and Clark. Like and when we get that page, I know we talked about it before the show. Uh, at first, you know, like the art during when they're eating the ice cream. When you, when you guys tell me that it, this is all, it's it's not happening minutes apart. It, it is a conversation that is literally happening. Yeah. Happening. All it's you would be to, able to show is like a facial. T- facial well, that's what twitch. I said. You it's you like, said you know like there were some repeating uh, panels, but I think that's established. Like not much time passes. They're like quickly eating the ice cream. Is while they're walking, talking, each other, talking, walking, so. and that those two pages are so excellent about them talking to each other and. The duality of their conversations are very similar, and it shows them just walking and talking. Like, like you said, a Superman Batman comic usually is about like these two like solving crime or doing s- they balance each other out too. In that in that two pages, it's them walking eating ice cream, and you're like, oh, this is some of the best pages I've seen all year. And instant image is because, um, and I believe when Lois and Clark got married, I believe Batman was one of the groomsmen. I can't remember if maybe full it cow. Was. I don't think he was full cowl, but I'd be cool. I mean, could you imagine seeing Bruce Wayne sitting there like as, I mean, sorry, reverse that Clark as Bruce's best man. Yeah. I'm sure it's gonna be Alfred, but. Oh, I was, I, I didn't even think Alfred. I was thinking Dick Grayson. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Bruce has got enough options for that, but right. I think, I think it's always said that Clark is Bruce's best friend, yeah. regardless of whether. Bruce says it, which everyone should read that Superman Batman run by uh, by Ed McGinnis and Jeff Loeb. 
I loved Bruce's answers to most everything in the questions on whether or not they're going to switch outfits. No. We want to go do this? No. <laughs> and she's like, I think what my fiance means that. Uh, as far as she he's, says, he's reasonably understanding, and so am I. But that's what makes them work is that Bruce is like obviously this stuck stick up in the mud. stick in the mud, and she's the bat like stands for bad. And she she <laughs> obviously knows how to charm people. She's a cat woman. Yeah. She knows how her social skills are way better than Bruce's. Mm-hmm. And the, oh, there's I don't think it was, I don't know if it's this issue or the last issue where they talk about how Bruce never had parents that he could look up to because they died when he was young, and so he has an ideal of what they were. But Clark is this. It's this one. What are you talking about? Clark had grew up with his parents, and they established like who he is, and he loves his parents so much because they taught him right, wrong from right, and it really does establish how different they are, even though they do get along. That Bruce is always going to be looking up at his parents, to be like, and see them as those people who basically they're frozen infallible. in time to him. They're infallible, and Clark knows that people aren't always like he sees he knows the world because of his parents whereas Bruce sees the world because his parents got killed so he sees like them as everything as bad and he's always skeptical about everything where Clark sees the good in people because two strangers brought him in when he was a baby and like how can there's no better way to show that all people aren't bad than those two strangers who brought him in from a baby and raised him so uh like you said I wish that he was writing Superman, Batman. It would book, be great. Or even if he took over Trinity. Yeah. Like, do, like he needs to be writing Superman. Right. And I know, remember I talked about, he said he wrote Superman by himself. I don't know what that's for, but it's coming out, obviously. We'll see it eventually. But yeah. he talked on Twitter, he wrote a solo Superman story. I don't know what it's for, but. That'd be exciting. We'll see. This was a 10 out of 10 for me. I mentioned before. It was 10 the best out of 10, issue of the year. for sure. It's one of the Gosh, best. Should I be real hard ass and do a nine? Is no. there going to be a third part to this? No. No, this no, is no just the two. next part is. Uh, isn't Wonder Woman coming in? I thought I saw serious business. I don't know what the next one is, but I know it's a more serious. Story. I tell you what, this honestly, Which is this? Thirty-seven. Okay. Thirty-seven. This may actually be one of probably my favorite um, DC book right now is Batman. Batman, it's because really every ass. issue has been. I, I don't think there's been less than a ten out of ten in the last six issues. Right. It's. I think you know all the build up to the story has really paid off. So, um, the next issue is the origin of Bruce Wayne. Oh, by uh, Travis Moore and it could be like a two Thompson. issue thing, uh, but ch- or two panel thing. Yeah, bang, bang, done. Oh. All right, that's a Bruce. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> well, actually, I thought I saw that he was gonna meet. Oh, up you know what? At one point, I I did read about this on Twitter. Clay Man fell behind, so issue twenty eight is the origin of Bruce Wayne, and then twenty or thirty nine is the last ish finale of Super Friends. Yeah, so I thought it was a three parter. It's okay. a three parter, but he fell behind, so instead of delayed and not getting a book. They're having a one shot about Origin of Bruce Wayne. So. Okay. Who's doing the right art for that one? Travis Moore. <coughs> Who's that? Um, I've seen him before. I can't nail it down and say what he's done before. When you say Travis Moore, I think of Travel uh, Foreman. He's an artist. Yeah. Bad. Nope, I like him. I know, you st- I know you do. You lie to yourself. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, last book we're talking about for the night. Well, not true. Not true. Not true. But last, last one of our regular reviews. Right. Uh, Nightwing number 35, written by Sam Humphreys, with art by Bernard Chang, and colors by something Mialo. Uh, sorry, not to cut you off. Uh, one, Beyonce had the best video of all time. This is one of my favorite. <laughs> I like that joke. Uh, this is one of my favorite covers of Nightwing. Yeah, Bernard Chang doing this city, like this factory where if Nightwing flipping off. Uh, <laughs> flipping off the garter. His just body like, flipping off nah. the building or like the railing. <laughs> I want to buy that book. Is incredible. Um, you know, me and Alex and Did you guys get that cover? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I got this one. I told I told I've Garrett talking, that yeah. since the rebirth things where they don't do the title of the arc, I'm gonna get whatever issue whatever yeah. cover I like. Um, you know, we were kind of dying out with uh t- Tim, Tim Seeley's Nightwing. I mean, he was more focused, I think, on the villains. Like he wanted his villains to be the best part of the story whereas we want we want dick grayson we want nightwing we yeah, want him nightwing, at the forefront. Not villains. exactly so what sam humphreys did which is what he did with green lanterns is it makes you care about dick grayson as a person you care about what he cares about um you know that you know he's basically you know if batman could have picked a son this would be it because you know he is that he's lighthearted, more lighthearted than bruce is but when it comes down to it, he's not going to cross any line. It's always save first, ask questions later. Like, there's the mission, uh, whatever else, doesn't matter. Um, 
you know, you get in here and they, they are establishing a villain that's been in Nightwing before, which is the judge. Um, okay, I don't know who the judge is. You'd have to read old stuff. He was He's basically a manipulator. Um, not necessarily like Mad Hatter, but similar. I mean, he uses like... I mean, he uses things you have to hold or tie. Right. Like Hawkeye's uh, Kate's uh, dad. Yeah. You have to have, right, exactly. So he's the purple man. Yep. So they established the new villain um, at a casino at the same time that Nightwing's uh, stopping a limousine heist. Um, I love how there's hey, a lot of action. South Dakota shout out. She stabs yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. She's like, I just want to relax. I'm at Banana South Dakota. And then, a few days. bam, right to the fucking neck. Yeah. That's how you take him out. That's what I'd do. Jugular. <laughs> um, so we get a, a real internal monologue of Dick Grayson because before it's been like, you know, he's complaining because Bloodhaven's not accepting him, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he's having to deal with Tiger, Shark, and uh, what's his? Guppy? The Raptor and Blood, oh, Blockbuster. Blockbuster, which talk about your snoozer villains now. I tell you what, I I want him to I want him to be done with all that BS. I get that's part of the book. Yeah. You got to fix what had happened. But this this book was a, uh, a a fresh air. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, it's the only little reboot. Was a fresh air. Um, <laughs> you know, Dick was living in that institute for the reformed villains, but now he lives in the uh, uh, behind the cross training gym that he now runs as his day job. Do you cross train? No. Do you? Do you know? Are you mad at Grayson for cross training? It's okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as, long as, as long as he uses full it. range of motion and correct form. I saw that and I was like, I guarantee you that uh, Garrett doesn't like that he opened a cross training gym. Yeah. I wish it was hey, I tell you what, when you, right. get, when you get as ripped as uh, Grayson, did you see his ass in the last he, pant? He's just, he has a cross training gym because he's trying to show other Yahoo's that just think that they could look like it. To be fair, when he's Nightwing, he is doing CrossFit out there. Yeah. He's not doing CrossFit. He's doing acrobatics. Difference. You is know, he, there is gymnastics in CrossFit, but... Full range of motion, correct form, not CrossFit. Boom. What? Top by there. Bruce. Does whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I really like this. There were some new characters like Guppy. Mm-hmm. It's like his shark, like kid shark informant. Um, you know why the villain? I didn't like though that he just lives him out, lives him to live on the street. Yeah. Bring him in. <laughs> the fuck. I like oh. how Guppy has uh, stubble. Yeah. I know he's part human, but Bernard Chang on our. How do you like Bernard Chang's art? Honestly, I, I I love this issue. It looked great. It read great. Yeah. Your face is weird. Listen to you. I know, but I'm not used to you actually looking at me. It's just, I don't know. I, could... I thought the art was great. The panel work was uh, pretty great. Um, What's your lettering in this one? The lettering is good. I didn't, that one I didn't look at. So. One complaint I had is the uh, end of it, someone uh, shoots Nightwing. Detective Svogata. Yeah. yeah. Where's Where's the bullet coming out of this? Where's the shell casing? Bugs me. <laughs> it's not right. It's about to come out. No. The, the thing bullet discharged. has already left. No, this Go to glam. the next page. You'll see the next page. There, it's in her hand. No, that's not <laughs> it. That's the damn... It's right there. You can't see it? <laughs> that, I like how big that shell casing is. He's dead. There was a reflect, refraction in the light. You Whatever. See I'll let it go. Alex, you must be fun at parties. I really, I'm not, People actually. tell stories. You're like, that doesn't make fucking sense. So hold on. Let's go back. <laughs> but this is seriously what Nightwing <laughs> needed. We need to focus on Dick Grayson. Um, it's going to go back into his past a little bit, which they're always going to do with a Robin story. But it's not the focus. It's just kind of showing you who this character is as a person. Um, and it helps you show like what he's going to do in this book. Um, fresh villains. I mean, a villain that's been in the book before, but we haven't seen him in years. Um, fun side characters like Detective Svobogata. I don't know how to say that last name. And Guppy. And then you get Nightwing doing his thing, which is... Uh, Kicking some crap. You know, I don't. I don't need the villains to be kick ass. I just need them to be well told. I yeah. just need to be a good Cunning. villain. Have yeah. a reason for being a villain. Yeah, have a reason to pick a fight with them, not just because you can. So it's basically the judge is getting revenge on Nightwing in his new. Scene. I like that the um, villain for once. Like it's the last couple of villains have been more about strength. Yeah, and this one finally is just like let's get somebody in there that he doesn't know how he can beat him because he doesn't like. Everybody might be on his side. He doesn't know for sure. And there's that aspect of him trying to be a detective, figuring out like what's going on. Whereas in the last ones, it felt like him just trying to figure out how to beat a big guy. Yeah. Like how are you gonna beat this big guy? 
kick him in the knees, kick him in the cross. And he's fought Done. him twice before, and a lot, and not he, he thought he won. Yeah, but he's and he came back, back again. Yeah, I really dislike this issue. Um, it, I did like this issue. Okay, okay I heard. I really disliked, disliked this issue. Yeah, that might have came out. This fucking James is bringing me all these drinks. Um, Jimmy, where's that fucking steak? <laughs> How long does it take to make a steak? I said medium. That's why you go for fucking twenty four ounces. What do you mean, well done? I'm assuming that this eight ounce steak you have him making has gotten burnt at least four times. That's what I mean. He brought it out well done. Um, no, that's called like just dust. This Hard issue, dust. I expected this issue to be more of a hard reset. It really wasn't. They talked about old stuff, and but it did. There was enough here for me to be like, okay, I'm good with this. Like Let's move fresh forward. Take, yeah, it wasn't like it didn't blow me out of the water. Right. The art was really great, but the story wise, it felt more like he's establishing foundation, and I'm okay with going in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like that he was like the mansion's not built yet. I didn't show up and be like, oh shit, look at this. this it didn't blow me away when I first saw it, but I'm willing to give it a chance and go forward with this. Uh, I do like actually Grayson's uh, characterization in this whole book. I really liked it a lot, especially when he's in his uh, cross training gym yep. and he's trying to be a customer service kind of guy. And he's like, I don't know how to do this. Uh, let me pretend to be Alfred. <laughs> like, and yeah. he's like, Alfred knows customer service. So, um, and then someone offers but, him a tip and he's like, uh, but I, I, I like that. I liked he has his morals. I don't take bribes. And he was funny. But he was lighthearted, and he said he has morals and like there's everything about it, him in this book. I was like, okay, that's Dick Grayson. So I don't feel like uh, Sam Humphries is going to go the wrong way with this story. And Bernard Chang's art was great, yep. so coloring was great. Nine, give it a ten, give it an eight. I think it the reason is because Tim Seeley was doing such a shitty job up to this point that this is so refreshing. That I had to give it a ten. I never I, read the last arc. Did you, you have you have you actually gotten it? I have. Oh. I would just skip it. In all honest, well. Yes, and I tell you what, the last no issue, one from that last arc was in this book, except for the they talk about it for a second. But. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you don't have. To I understood read it. the whole thing. Don't go back. Just when you find that's it, one of those twenty super, years. That's from one now. of those Superman things you should just probably let it go and then picked up when Humphreys came back. Yeah. Uh, Nightwing. What did you say? You gave it ten. Ten. He's ten. I'm nine. You're eight. Nightwing number thirty-five. That is Sam Humphreys' first issue. We got Batman number thirty-seven. Uh, super Friends Part Two. We have. Uh, Sherlock Frankenstein, The Legion of Evil, number three. Uh, Defenders, number eight. Shit. Metal, number four. Yep. And uh, Thor, number 702. Yeah, so good. You know, it wasn't blowing, it didn't blow me away this week. There was some good and some bad. You know, the thing, the one, nice range the one issue, the one book that actually had the opportunity to at least kind of be impressive would have been Defenders. Yeah. Hmm. You've got two, but. you've got three issues to wrap this baby up in, in a nice bow. And all we're going to get is a whole lot of uh, open holes. That's why I'm glad I get to save eight bucks and not get the rest of the series. No, I'm, I'm going to get it just to finish it. I don't know what they could have done, though, for me. Like, I don't know how they would be able to wrap it up. Like, I feel like... They just kind of came together again as a team. So I feel like, like they should have not uh, announced that it was going to be canceled. That they should have just been like, uh, somebody else is taking over. And then that way you wouldn't feel like... That they have to wrap it up in three issues, that they could be like, okay, let's set something up, and then yeah, you could end at fifteen or twenty, or do know. something smaller. Yeah, it seems like it's. And no offense, Kingpins of New York seems like it's it's too wide. That's a big city. That's what I mean, to have. it seems like a grand story. You got three issues to do it, and all the defenders are doing is in an alley, crawling with each other, fighting with each other. So. Not even fighting with each other, just uh, trying to figure out who Matt Murdock is, or figure out who Jared, Jared Gary is. or Greg, which are, which I don't know. that joke. Uh, Jimmy brought you a shiner. He did brought me a shiner. Good work, Jimmy. Uh, what do you think of the Nightwing? Two out of ten. All right. What do you say about Batman? Us. Batman. What do you think about Batman? That issue. Oh, you don't like Superman, so it was a one. Okay. Well, you're the one. You know, you know, Jimmy. I got a I got a bone to pick with you. Got a horrible choice in most things, other than beer. Spot on. Um, but your book choice is horrible. Jimmy Olsen is Superman's best friend, and you are Jim, not Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> you are not. For uh, our... You do not have a friend in us. Supercon 2018, the return of the con, September 28th, 29th, and 30th. Featuring guests like Tony Fleece, Shay Fontana, Sign Steve, and brought to you by Wednesday Comics, Phil Hester. Phil Hester is an Eisner Award-winning comic book artist. Phil is from Iowa. He's known for his uh, runs on Nightwing, The Flash, Season Zero, Teen Titans, and many more. He's currently drawing Batman Beyond for DC and Shipwreck for Aftershock. Wednesday Comics is proud to present Phil Hester at Supercon. Go to supercon.com for more information. 
for our feature today, we're going to talk about, uh, speaking of Christmas, our holiday specials, we're talking about DC Holy holiday. shit, it's almost Christmas. We're talking about DC holiday special number uh, number one, 2017. And then we're also talking about uh, Claus. <laughs> What's it called? Claus and Crisis, Crisis and Xmas Xmas Number one, that's from uh, Grant Morrison and Dan Mora. Uh, but let's talk about DC first. We'll talk about that one last. Uh, yeah, good. DC, we have Worst to best. written by Christopher Priest, Jeff Lemire, Dennis O'Neill, Tom King, Greg Rucka, Joshua Williamson, Shay Fontana, Dan DiDio, uh Max Landis. And who else? Is that it? There's 11 mm. people. I'm missing some. I don't oh, know. I won't I'm know. not going to open this. I'm on DC's website. So that's all they put. That's all they put. Art by Neil Gouge, Otto Schmidt, Balesk Evely, Raphael Abakurki, Steve Epton, Francis Manipool, um, Francis Frankavilla, 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 and then also the um, Jaleski. Which um, what? what did Albuquerque do? He, he did, did the uh, Sergeant Rock story. No, that's, no, Frank that's Frank Avila. Sorry, uh, Albuquerque did one of the Batman. Did he do the Batman Wonder Woman one? I don't think so, but maybe uh, you're right. I think maybe they messed up Frankavilla. I don't. I don't think Albuquerque was in this one. I, he was. I know he was. I know oh. Frank Avila was because I remember looking at it. Overall, what did you guys say about this book? I'll look it up. I would. I really enjoyed most of the stories. There were a couple that were like pointless, but I think it's one of the best Christmas specials I've ever read because of the talent. You know, before it was more like, "Hey guys, we have to put out." It was like we have to put out a Christmas yeah. annual. So, you know, maybe we'll get two out of the whatever eight to ten stories will be really good. This one. I would say 75% was good, if not great, storytelling. I've only gotten the 2016, 2017. I've only gotten the mm-hmm. past two. Uh, last year's only had at least maybe two parts I actually enjoyed. Here, let me give the proper credits. Um, Jeff Lemire and Jaleski Campicoli did the, the reminder, which well, was the, was the uh, Constantine Superman story that yeah, bookend sure. this whole thing. Campicoli's um, arts. Okay. Hey, by the way, the, so they have a bookend. They have... Uh, Constantine in a bar, Superman in a bar, Constantine talking about how bad the world is. And Superman is trying to remember why he thinks the world's so good. And then the bartender comes over and tells him a story. We've seen this bartender before. What book was it? Action Comics? Bibbo? Or what was his yeah, name? Yeah, Bibbo. Yeah, it makes yeah. The super, uh Clark like crashes in his bar and they all like all of a sudden they love Clark after that. Or Superman, excuse me. Yeah, it must have been in the first arc I think of it was in, I think it was in Action Comics. The next part was a Batman story. It was the night before Christmas. That is Dennis O'Neill and Steve Epstein. That was great. Uh, that was really good. Dave great. McCaig on the colors. I think we know Dave. Um, after that, we have the uh, Green Arrow story. That is uh, I love Greg Scott and our uh, buddy Fel Hester on the pencils. Yeah, from the Supercon. Um, Drew. Green Arrow and Black Canary so well, and their chemistry by the with the writing so good. Yeah, point. that was a really fun story. We get Sergeant Rock, that is Tom King and Francisco Francavilla. Uh, about Hanukkah was Do, a good story. Doesn't that make you want? Like I was saying this before the show. Doesn't that make you want like an army book again? Kind there of. used to be that's <laughs> comics. They're like superheroes. Yes, there were, but like there was a lot of like army and like different groups and organizations now that have like missions to accomplish. You don't get that very much anymore. Yeah, when the Comics Code first came out and they had to stop doing some things, uh, military books was one of them that they could do. So that's why you got a lot of those kind of books. Yeah. Also, I believe more back in the day, like especially World War II kind of era, there were more people interested in being like, oh, uh, like there's more of an idealized version of the military. So there are a lot of those books. Joshua Williamson, Neil Gouge. On Flash and Hope for the holidays, I like the art in that one. Neil Goose. that was good. He should be writing. Fl- he should be drawing Flash every single week, but we'll see. Or I guess every other week. Uh, that stroke. We have uh, Christopher Priest and uh, Tom. What's in that other twenty five percent. That's not good. I like that story a lot. Really, I really uh, did not like. It was that too one. long and like it was it was dragging on. But what about it? Oh, you guys just said. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, what about it? Did you like? <laughs> you literally I don't. I didn't care for the chemistry with those characters. And then we have a part. Oh, well, that's that's Deathstroke. I, he doesn't like. I mean, his family is dysfunctional. They don't get along. Well, I understand. Deathstroke doesn't like anything. He's an asshole. Props. I like. He's Slade. a horrible father. I like Slade, other than the horrible father part. Just everything else. Like, why are you guys all complainers? You're you all know what? Whiners. They could. Christopher Priest could sway away from how much of an asshole he is, especially in a Christmas or a holiday special. 
he could be like, oh no, it's trying to make him more cheerful on this issue. But I like that he kept. He made them. it more comedic. He uh, kept him, but like that part when his son speaks up to him, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, my belt's gonna uh, talk to you later," or something like that. I was like, "Yeah," because he would. That's what he. He's abusive. That's how he is. He's not a good person. I didn't say I didn't like Slade. I said all of his. No, family, I know, but all I, of his kids are. Whiners. I like that it. He didn't sway from his characterization yeah, I agree. Of, of Jeff Stoke. He like put him in that story, but he need to be like, let's kind of uh, clean this up for. It's a it's a holiday special. Uh, the next part you guys don't even remember: Max Landis and Francis Manipal, uh, Superman and Lois Lane in driver's seat. Okay, so I'm just pointing out that Garrett and I bought the hard cut. We we bought yeah. the issue. Um, he and I, I believe, both skipped this. If it was in our book, we did not read. Or it. if we did read it, not we memorable can't remember at it. all. Like not at all. And Marvin told you, us it was only two pages. You make me want to hold on. I lied. It's eight pages. It is. The no way did we? It's not, right after Deathstroke, right before Dan DiDio's story. No way did we get this then. In Dan DiDio's Deathstroke and probably that driver's seat were not good. Uh, Dan DiDio and Matthew Clark. Uh, I. I'll I'll fess up to it. I got like halfway to the story and I skipped the rest. Like it wasn't. I read it and didn't give a shit. It has nothing to do with anything. Nothing fun. Atomic Knights. Yeah. The only, only thing that they did in that whole story was that there are these alien trees that the human people hated, and all the trees wanted to do was be their friend, and so they made a Christmas tree so that they could all share in the light of the darkness. Teen Titans and Holly Spirit. This president, is president, not a writer. <laughs> this is friend of Supercon, also Shea Fontana and Otto Schmidt. That was good. Uh, it was fun. So good. It, if, when I read this, I was I was like, oh man, this is a fun little Teen Titans story. I um, like that Starfire is like the lead in that. Like, yeah. you don't get that very yeah. often anymore. It, I know. When I was first telling you guys, I kept saying that Starfire story, but I guess it's a Teen Titans story. But she really is the leader. She should be. She's the oldest one out of them. She is the leader in that group now. But she really feels like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. she's—I would say she's the one that seems to be the most, re- even most relatable, and she's the one who's not even human. And Otto Schmidt's art, man, top notch. That top guy, notch. I need him back. Like if he, he, was, he did five I, issues this year, need more stuff. I tell you need what, if, if this Otto was a, Schmidt was on Green Arrow, at least every second issue, like oh, every, I was going to say, I want him on Teen Titans. Teen Titans would be good too. If they, these two aren't Teen Titans, I would. That's a monthly. Book. Well, Green Arrow's a monthly book now too, though. But it oh, is it now? Oh, that's right. It's so a I want Phil Hester in Green Arrow. That was a good issue. Yeah. yeah. Especially the brought back the fun at Trick Arrows. Right. He's I like, know. I don't want to kill anybody, like, or I don't right. want to maintain During the anybody. Christmas season, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So we've got brought back the, uh, the punch punching the glove. God, yeah. so fucking good. Uh, Swamp Thing in the Echo of the Abyss, we have Scott Brian Wilson writing and Nick Klein on art. I thought that was, issue was really, because a lot of these issues were like, there were some fun issues. There were some very profound issues, like the Sergeant Rock one. And this one also, like, the guy tries to kill himself. Uh, Swamp, Swamp Thing basically is like, hey, not Don't today. Like, there's stuff to, because the world's basically going to kill itself. And he's like, nobody, we're going to be stuck up here. And he's teaches him hope again. And it's a nice little issue. And he turns to a Christmas tree. The so, S means hope. Wonder Woman and Batman and uh, Greg Rucka's story called Solstice with uh, Balesk Evely on art. Uh, I like that issue a lot, too. I Even that, though they're I not lovers the right now, like, they're so, you can tell they're such kindred spirits. Like, they're very, like, Unique in their own ways, but very similar, and they have a they have a really good connection. And like I like in that story, they're like, you know, how come this is always just me and you? And then she explains, like, they're like, well, Superman doesn't need this light. Like, I think we need this light because Superman's already got it. This is our yearly reminder that hey, it's it's not all darkness. I um like that a lot. The only thing about that story is every once in a while I would find it hard to know the through line for each story. I would get confused the back and forth a little bit. Not much, but yeah, it was good a lot. I like it. Um, I guess there wasn't a Raphael Albuquerque. Fake. DC, get it updated. Score. I'm sure Frank Avila is uh, glad you've mistaken his name for Albuquerque on their website. I assume that's it. They're uh, like, what was that I, long that's name? That's weird. Again? Their styles are not the same. No, I'm, I'm assuming it's just me. Like, yeah, what was that long name again? Oh, Frank Avila? No, no, no. It was Albuquerque. All right, put him down. Hmm. <laughs> Well. I would give it an eight because there were some that were like I, I think a nine was solid. I think where stories were, I think the sequence could have been pushed around a little bit, maneuvered better. Really, I did feel like it was like fun. It when there was no, I'm one. not saying it was bad. I just mean like where each story was consecutively throughout the whole book. I think there could have been a couple different changes to make. I got, it I got a seven for this one. It's, Only it had good stuff, but the things that I remember are. The ones I didn't care for. The only two I didn't care for were Dan Dio's and Max Landis. Max Landis would seem like a waste of time. 
Fred's po- friend, uh, Francis Manipal's art was great, but hmm. Hmm. Um, don't know. I didn't read it. <laughs> yeah. I remember. I was gonna say you were saying before, like, man, they really put their A team on this book, but I just feel like DC right now has an A team. They do. Like every single person oh. on this book is somebody who we've discovered recently: Otto Schmidt, uh, in a way, Tom King, uh, Shea Fontana. And then we have people that have been around forever. Greg Rucka. We have Jeff Lemire. Uh, Jeff Lemire. We have uh, Phil Hester. Like we have veterans and new people on this book that have come up in the last year. And these are the people writing comics for DC right now. So. I think who I'd like to have seen it actually would have been Sam Humphreys. I think he would have yeah. had a lighthearted, fun, just little holiday story. It would have been cool if he did a Green Lanterns one. That's what I was kind of surprised about. There was no love for the Green Lanterns in that Christmas special. I didn't no. think about that afterwards. Was like, There's like two Superman ones, so I don't think yeah. they should have cut out that Superman Lois Lane. Yeah. Maybe they did for I this. don't know why. That's crazy that they're not in that. They have two books that come out that's Green Lanterns related. Why wouldn't you? Also, uh, that Swamp Thing, uh, I really did like that art and story, so I'm excited because I, I didn't recognize those two at all, that road and drove, so I'm excited to see what else they do. Mm-hmm. It's good. I liked it. I did. I, I mean, it was good. I'm glad I got it. it definitely glad made me feel yeah. on the forecast. Like, it's it's about right now. like, it's good to read that kind of stuff now and be like, and a lot of that book, and especially when we'll talk about the next book coming up here, a lot of that book is not really about the commercialization of Christmas. It's more like about the spirit and uh, what Christmas means. And there's even parts of it where Black Canary felt like Christmas doesn't mean anything, and Green Arrow shows her, but like, it means something to them, to those kids. Yep. And in a Batman issue, um, like the even though I thought it was kind of weird that the bad person in that story turned out to be the grandma that died in the fucking snow. Yeah, <laughs> but still, <that's> weird. <laughs> I, that, that took a huge twist for me too. I, was like, I thought she was going to find peace, but she actually yeah. doesn't. He's just like get out of here. <laughs> I, I actually, I really did enjoy that to know that this this child is so. And one, I'm assuming she is legitimate. She's ghost. Yeah, yeah. But it was one of those things that it was nice to see how how well she listened to him. Bruce shows up through the chimney, Santa style. Doesn't beat the shit out of the guy. Just stops him from killing. The, yeah, and he the, just the he's family. like, hey, I don't want to do this either. She's like, he's like, she's making me. Makes me think of that uh, Vertigo book with Survivors Club. Yeah, with the uh, murder. I um, I did like that story a lot for Steve Epstein's art, and I was like, oh, can he draw Batman? <laughs> like, was like, what's going on here? Well, he drew a good Batman. He, yeah. he, I tell you what, there are a lot of artists who draw Batman so well. Honestly, one of them is uh, Riley Rosmo. He's not the big burly Batman, but he just he looks so good. Yeah, I loved when Bruce is covered in soot, and just oh, it looks so good. I forgot that Steve Epstein was doing work for DC, but he did do Batwoman. Yeah, so yeah, he's over there, he's around. Same thing, with Greg Rucka is like, and that, it's nice to see that he didn't do that Wonder Woman uh, first year and then get sick of DC again and leave. He's still around, like he enjoyed his time there. So obviously, he's kind of come back and new stuff for them. So I think the Solstice one actually probably is the strongest one for me. Pretty There's good. something about, obviously, Bruce's darkness all the time. Respect. Uh, Wonder Woman, she's born to be a, a fighter, a warrior. There's, she's a, a, you know, a hopeful, a, a happy woman, but she's seen a lot of shit. That Tom King one was great for me. Sergeant Rock. And, and the, and the, and the, the, yeah, the Tom yeah, King. Those sweet. two are my, probably my favorites. I like it for two reasons. One, the rest of them were Christmas stories. That was a Hanukkah story, so I felt different. But also, like the whole idea of it, just for me, it was like the guy gets shot by a sniper. He's like, he probably just was getting rid of his ammo and he's holding the gun against the Nazi and he's like dying over the course of eight days, but he's not, he's holding on until this Nazi gets brought to justice. Yeah. And it's an interesting concept. Like when I was reading, I was like, Tom King is like the king of, uh, no pun intended, yeah. of like finding concepts that I'm like, how would, like I've never seen this before. Yeah. Or even like I've seen it, but he brings nice <laughs> twists to it where I'm like, this is a awesome way to do a Hanukkah story. Like he's holding on for eight days to make sure that at the end he goes, "Did we get him?" And Sergeant Rock goes, "Yeah, we did." And then he passes away. Yeah. You know, it's just like, damn, that's good. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that yeah. gets nominated for Nizer again for two years in a row. His Stop holiday guess. story gets yeah. nominated. Um, I really enjoyed the Flash story. I thought like Christmas oh, yeah, spirit good wise. Good. Like you know how people can get busy at Christmas time and you forget the reason why really we good. all do yep. this. It's to connect and. You know, you could see that Barry was like all over the place, like trying to, you know, do too many things at once. And Wally's like, hey, man, like you're all my only family. Like you brought me back to life. Like all the Teen Titans, they're back home. Well, I guess Starfire, too, is whatever. She's lonely. But I did like but that. The, but isn't he on the Titans team, not Teen Titans? Yeah, the Titans team. But still, like they're all with their families yeah. for the holidays. And he's just kind of like, well, I don't really have anyone to hang out with. And neither does Barry. But Barry's just keeping himself occupied. And 
you know, I like that at the end, Barry does all his stuff, but then he goes, hangs out with Wally and it's like, hey, let's celebrate Christmas together. But I like that the reminder for Barry was the little girl yeah. who, yeah. who didn't give it, who didn't care about actually getting to be with the family. She just wanted them to have the gifts. Right. Yeah, can you then make why, sure that then Flash is like, Christmas holy crap, yeah. I can get everyone home. Right. Why really Why should they miss out on Christmas because of the stupid airport? But he didn't take the security guard home. I assume the security guard, either one, <laughs> lived there, two, but lived in But it still was a town. snowstorm, like, give him a ride. Yeah. You need yeah, some badass to be like, you did it. I told you guys, Neil Goose should be really doing art for Flash going forward. Like, it was It was great. That was, You know what? Talking to you guys more, it goes, this, this was a really good book. It was. It, it was what worth was it? my time. Nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yep. Ten bucks. Really was. There's a lot we of were, stories. We were all really skeptical about that price, but I think it was worth it. I think it was worth. The um, if you feel skeptical about that price, I'm sure next Christmas you'll see it on Hoopla, like the last one was. So. Yeah. But it's a nice way. Like if you're really looking for something to uh, get you in the mood for for holidays. Watch uh, Die Hard. Oh wait, sorry. Well, you got to read sometimes too. Up your I- <laughs> IQ. Hey, there's now a Die Hard uh, picture book. Cover picture book for adults. What was the next book? Uh, Claws and the Crisis in Exmusville. I can't call him Claws. I come on, Klaus. What I, I'm sorry. Claws and the Klaus. Crisis in Exmusville, number one, written by Grant Morrison with art by Dan Mora. And I believe colors are also by Dan Mora. I believe. I, I'm not sure. Yep, it is. Um, this is my Christmas book of the year. I mean, I loved every single part. It was seven ninety nine. Probably got 60 pages, I think. It was big. It was oversized. Um, literally, it read so well as a one-shot. And I love that, like, you know, we got the the mini, the series that started it all, like, two years ago. And, we're like, we thought that it was going to be just Dumb. that. Yeah. But I love that, you know, for the fans, we get, like, it's, it's third year now. We're getting an issue a year. And I think, that, I hope that continues. I think that's awesome. I think one, it just makes sense that why not have Klaus just show up during Christmas time? Right. I mean, at least as a book. And when you do those oversized ones, that's like, you know, not three half, issues like, right there. Yeah, like three months worth. It's like a quarterly, but you get it once a year, yeah. which is. Which is fine. Yeah, because he's a busy guy. He edits a lot of books. He's editor at Heavy Metal, and he's going to do a new DC book, so. Um, story-wise, you know, corporate America is coming in trying to basically... Instead of Coca-Cola, what do we have? Pola we cola Pola cola uh, Trying to own Christmas, basically. Trying to commercialize it. They don't care about the old Santa Claus. They want to kill him off and make a new Santa Claus in this place. Right. That would be more commercialized. <laughs> yeah, he was going to be like, ba- blue. This is yeah. like, this is... Ba- Whoever they chose for bad Santa, man, that's like a Bane Batman or right. a Bane. Basically, Santa. was a Santa from a different universe or alternate dimension that was the opposite of everything Santa stands for. Oof. You know what? It made me read this book. Made me think of a couple of things. First off, actually, I wanted to say that I watched Grant Morrison on Seth Meyers' um, late night recently, and he said that a reason he was talking about he was promoting Claus uh-huh. and Happy, and he said that the whole Does reason he say Claus or he say Klaus. I don't know. I don't remember. I can look it up. Really. We should, yeah, to be fair, we I should, want to know. We should look it up because if he's calling it Claus, we'll call it Claus. Oh, by yeah. the way. Oh, never mind. No. Say, um, what were you say? No, I, th- I was going to say I was watching. Uh, there's a secret history of uh, comic books on yeah. AMC. And the last one was about image. And Kevin Smith in that one uh, calls Todd McFarlane. He calls him tar- uh, Todd McFarlane. And I was like, oh, have you been saying Todd's name wrong this whole time? But then... Um, I think Jim Lee calls him Tom, Todd McFarlane, and I was like, oh. "Okay, Jim would know." Yeah. <laughs> um, but this book made me really miss Grant Morrison. Like, I read this book and I was oh. like, "God, he's so fucking good!" Like everything about it—the crazy concept, like you said, the idea of like this altered dimension, Santa's the bad guy, but then also like there's some real uh, meaning behind this, like the commercialization of uh, of Christmas, and then also though it's like a badass uh, Claus. Like yeah, going we, and fight people. We get some heartfelt moments with uh, his wolf that we've seen in the first series. Oof. What's her name again? Lily. Lily. Lily Man, that gets, me off. Lily gets... She might uh, give her up back, though. She gets killed, quotation mark. He bites her but, in the neck. Yeah, bites her neck, blood everywhere, and, like, you're heartbroken. All you hear is, like, a wimp. Like, you see a whimper on him on a PS style, and then I you, tell you what, next I, panel, and you're like, Klaus should have Wolverine that shit just ran up and stabbed him right at the stomach. Oh, well, then he started beating him up. What I was going to say was that... On Seth Meyer, uh, Graham Morrison said that we, the whole idea for him being like, I need uh, to write a story about Santa Claus where he's like a superhero 
came out of Happy because in Happy, Santa Claus is the bad guy. And he yeah. felt so bad about making Santa Claus a bad guy. He's like, I better make him like this really awesome uh, superhero. <laughs> spoilers for Happy, but Santa Claus rapes little kids. So, oh. <laughs> What? I haven't read nor will I watch that show yet. I want to eventually read that dickweed. <laughs> you fuck face. He just told you that Santa's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, the, I didn't know he raped kids. <laughs> it's Grant Morrison. Oh, come on. This is a holiday episode. <laughs> Hey, Jamie, did you know that? It's Jimmy. Not Jamie. Where's the, where's the, I didn't say James. Yeah, you just, you just said, said Jamie. Jamie. Oh. <laughs> James. Where's that steak at? <laughs> Told you. 24 he's ounces. He's getting fired, Phil. God. Mate, he's probably eating that steak back there. He's like, fuck you guys. We got to introduce some new characters. Um, Frost. What's... Father Frost. Father, Father Frost. Frost. He was awesome. He was, he was really cool. <laughs> what made me laugh is he tells... Um, what's the girl's name? Mm. Do you remember? Daughter he, Frost? <laughs> sure. Da- Liddy, little Frost. He oh, tells her, um, don't break my staff. It's the only one I have. And right away it gets broken. <laughs> and, then, and then evil Santa takes it and breaks it in half. Yeah. Like, Good job holding onto that staff for him. Well, I think that Frost is kind of like, you know, a Yoda-ish figure to like Luke Skywalker and Star Wars kind of thing. I know you don't like that reference. Shut up. No, I wasn't going to say anything. Like a mentor, though. I too, actually uh, thought that it was supposed to be older Santa. Oh, at first second there, I thought because the they look so much alike. They do, and Maybe so it was I just like assumed, time traveling yeah, or yeah. something. I assumed it was um, him in the past, right? And so, oh, that's fine. But anyway, I I, I did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, if I you think remember, the, I think the thing is that I don't. I haven't read enough Grant Morrison to know that most of the time it's a ridiculous story. Well, it's good, right? But it's fucked up. But think about what he accomplished in those pages. Like he he opened it up with a story about having that gun, that toy gun, yep. um, that is basically a beacon for Santa, because she's the one that alerts him about the Coca Cola. Oh, Coca-Cola. Yep, that's right, uh, Kate. You're right, and then it pays off at the very end when his grand he gives like her granddaughter. You know, she's doing a book signing about that story. It's called The Crisis in Xmasville, and a guy in a hood you don't see him says, "Hey, this is your mother's." Um, I just want you to know that like, that so story. Grandmothers. Was, grandmothers, yeah. Whatever, that story was true. And then she doesn't think any of it, looks down and sees the toy gun that she had talked about in her story. And I think one of the best moments in comics. Walks out on the street, you don't see anything. Her name was Kate. Yeah, her name was Kate. Oh, dude. Yeah. Gives me shivers down my spine. It was, it was so good. And then you flip the back cover and it's the same image. Yep. It was. It's just a special story. I think... Grant Morrison is a master of storytelling. And I know you're still trying to find your niche with Grant Morrison, but I think you'll find it one time. And then when you reread some of these things, I think that's you're going to be awake. I have yet to find a book that just draws me into how he writes. Why don't I, you read I, All-Star Superman? Well, okay. Other than that, because that is a good book. But like Nameless, I never, I didn't get Nameless like you guys uh, did. Nameless isn't going to be one, one. Nameless is something that if you start loving Grant Morrison's work, that you read. That. I want to read Happy. Happy was good. Um, I read the Batman Robin stuff one through twenty six. Batman Incorporated. You didn't read, that. and I did, but I didn't read Incorporated. Yeah. So there are things that I've I've read chunks of him, but not enough for like where you guys are. And I think a part of it will help when I read. Um, what's the book you guys gave me? Uh, Shit. Oh, Super Gods. Yeah, Super yeah, Gods. I was his, thinking Super Sons. Yeah, hey, I'm back. When I, I was beating Jimmy's ass in the back. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> when, <laughs> when I read Super Sons. Uh, Super shit. Gods. Super Gods. Oh, I think Grant Morrison. Morrison. They're telling him he's that. Trying, he's not really finding his, like, his love and appreciation for Grant Morrison's writing. Like, yeah, I don't think he's like understands how he writes. And so I'm saying there's going to be a story he's going to come across one day that he'll hit the he'll hit it and then come back and re- everything will be better. Because let's tell him I've read Batman you know and Robin. What? Grant Morrison and he goes oh the, but I haven't read Incorporated. Uh, I want to read Happy. I, w- I haven't read Nameless. And I read this and like it's it's good. The thing about it, Grant Morrison, and I think you have to learn uh, to read stories differently if you want to get into his stuff is uh, you have to let go. Like his stories aren't going to be 100 percent logical. And he talks about that in Super God's book. He's like, the one thing that people always talk about is that kids don't understand the difference between fiction and fact. And he said that's not true. Kids understand it way more than uh, adults. You can tell a kid, I think he talks about Talking Crab or something like that, that they'll watch a Talking Crab on TV, and they don't think if they go to the beach like a crab's going to talk to them, they know that's on TV. Whereas like an adult would be like, well, how does a crab talk? Like, how did, like, does it have powers? Or does it have, like, they don't understand, well, that's fiction. 
Like, what does it matter how it works? It's a fictional piece of work. It's to tell a story. It's not to tell you how everything works 100% in this world logically. Hmm. And so when he writes something, a lot of times it's more, it's like a fairy tale. It's more to tell you a story and give you a moral rather than tell you, be like, this is a fully realized, and he does do a good world building, but it's not a fully realized world where like everything is one plus one equals two for him. X plus Z equals uh, an apple. Good yeah. like he's, yeah, right. he's fucking yeah. taking drugs. Like he's not. And but you'll be like, what does that even fucking make sense? But anybody be like, well, I'm crying. So like it did something. And then he makes you <laughs> yeah, think about the sense. story. <laughs> like you rethink the plot over and over and over again. And like you might have six different realizations um, that you're thinking about because that's just how cra- that's how loose he is at writing when it comes to like concepts. But even like that, he's weird like that. But also, I think he understands the core concept of a character. Batman and Robin, if you ever heard him talk about Batman and Robin, he understands that relationship. And so when he's writing those books, you're like, he really understands like what makes these two work. When he re- re- uh, writes All-Star Superman, when you hear him talk about Superman, especially in the Super Gods book, when you get to it, you'll read that and be like, okay, now I understand what Superman is about, hearing from Grant Morrison. like, And then you'll go back and read other stories that are not even his, and you'll be like, yes, this is a good Superman story because it goes back to his core characteristics rather than being like, Oh no! In this one, he's just like punching shit. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, I think he really understands how these characters work. And so, like, when he's writing a story, he'll tear them out to that part, and then kind of make it be like, okay, here's what they're about, and then also put crazy shit around them. Like, and I think that's what I like him. Yeah. For the for the record, as much as I may act like a stick in the mud. I really do have an imagination. Right. Some of my favorite characters are the team. No, I'm just, I'm yeah. just saying so everyone doesn't go. I saw that. Everything's you're asking about sense. that bullet casing. <laughs> what does okay. it matter? Yeah. It did bug me, though. <laughs> now, but that's one, but that, to me, that's one of those things that is a realistic-ish thing. Yeah. yeah. Is that there would be a bullet getting released from But that. here's the thing that Grant would say to you. Why does it matter? Like, how does it affect the story that you say bullet casing? Yeah, but whereas, but in the same wild storm when you see that's that, what I say. Whereas some writers would be like, no, then we need to show what happens with this, and but that's a different type of writer. That's not who Graham Morrison is. Well, and I, and I get that. Like, my, I mean, some of my favorite characters are uh, turtles, which when they're in the book, fabulous. Great. Um, but I know that they really couldn't speak English the way they are. There would be other sounds that would happen, not perfect English. I'm fine with that. I'm just things that I, I question some stuff in this book. I didn't question shit. Um, big giant elephant in the room, though. Someone we also have to address is Dan Moore on art. Yeah, so good. Hey, oh, his so style good. was different in this book. I thought at least it was very much watercolors. Yeah, and actually, you did remind me of uh, Black Sad I've been re- recently in the art in Black Sad. It reminded me of that a lot. It was like watercolors. It was a different cool. look to it. I think there was some. There was a lot of his crisp art that he's really good at doing. Uh, but you're right. I think it was a. It's kind of descender uh, Black Yeah. Sad, I, oh, so. I was just saying, it, it made me think of uh, Sean Murphy art. Yeah. Where it had a lot Very more detailed. lineage, it had a little bit more that was great. shading, and it looked great. But and so hey. I mean, like you know, I wrote a tweet. I was like, "Hey, I can't wait till next Christmas because I'm ready for the next." We get story. the Christmas cave with all the vehicles and shit. That's where Father Frost was. Yeah, yeah. And his, uh, I I want the Island of Misfit Toys. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Like, story. Well, then at toys. the end, yeah, she give he gives or the, the gun. Nutcracker. He gives the flutter <laughs> the flutter gun thing to the daughter, the granddaughter of the person he saves in the story, and was like. Hey, if you don't anything, we already talked about. Yeah. Just use. Oh, I was. Being <laughs> I know. I know. You were doing other stuff. Uh, actually, while I was beating uh, Jimmy up, uh, he did eat that steak. So, mystery he solved. ate it. Yeah, that's uh-huh. right. Beat him up. Uh-huh. But I listened to. I rewatched that Seth uh, Myers uh, interview because you said, "How does he say it?" He never says it in an interview. Dang. Seth Myers does say Klaus, and he goes, "Oh, I should say Klaus." And Graham Morrison doesn't stop him. So I. But maybe it's one of those things. It's into uh, for us. It's Klaus. Yeah. But for other people, it's Klaus. Maybe he was Klaus, and now he's Santa Claus. So, because like, uh, be you know fair, how things over time, yeah. get, it's like telephone. Because be fair, this is actually he is Santa Claus, correct? Yeah. And I do I, like. Go ahead. I love how his name, his wolves are actually named with the reindeer are because <laughs> yeah. he calls them Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitz, and right. that's pretty. Good. Oh, that scene in the end where he's riding the sleigh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. I do like that each one of these stories is like years apart. So yeah. the next one we'll get. This was like nineteen eighty-five. Eighty-five. And then when he gives the gun to the girl, it's nineteen ninety six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next one we get might be in the nineties, and then we'll get early two thousands, and then we'll get a two thousand seventeen. Yeah. This is one of the things I hope continues. Does anyone else do this in comics? No, I mean I don't think so. Besides, you know, the mainstream. Well, it's kind of like the DC holiday special, except Grant Morrison and Dan Warner were like, 
but we're going to do a holiday special with a character we basically made up two years ago. So. Right, exactly. And I think that's so a special new for fans. Yeah. I think that, you know, that's that's what Image Comics is all about, or Boom Studios. Like it's boom, boom right? it's boom. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's independent comics are all about, is like not doing things the way the big two do it. Yep. Doing things the way you want to, and it's fun for your fans. You're always rewarding your fans for reading your books. Boom, it's a nice little studio. I like them. Yeah. So I tell you what, the, yeah. I give it a 10. Oh, this was a nine. How many things are you going to tell me tonight, by the way? About what? <laughs> you keep saying, I'll tell you what. So, I just wanted to. To be, uh, uh, to be fair, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, a little bit of it could be the beer. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to point it out because I know somebody's listening to the show being like, he said that like 15 times. He's tonight. telling me a lot of stuff. Jimmy? Oh, he's dead. Sorry. <laughs> he's dead? I don't know how many times I beat he him. He lodged a stake in his throat. I tell you what, uh, Marvin the Murderer. Good name. <laughs> <laughs> Pen it up, TM. Uh, yeah, it really didn't make me miss me. Uh, make me miss Grant Morrison. So yeah. come back, please. He's coming back soon. Hey, when I saw him on Seth Meyers too, I was like, I just like that guy. Yeah, He's dude, really, you should watch. I need to watch. I haven't even watched it yet. You need just to watch him talk, like do an interview, listen to him. Oh, I've on, seen him on Fat Man, on, on Batman, Kevin Smith. Yeah, something, especially on that one. He talks about Batman a lot. Obviously, it's a Batman podcast. But I mean, just hear him talk. And I think it's something about hearing him talk and the passion being like how much he likes these characters that whenever he writes them, I'm always, I give him the benefit of the doubt a little bit because I'm like, I know he loves these characters and trying to do the best. And he's not phoning in anything. So, Graham Morrison, like my, those are two holiday specials for the year 2017. That is DC Holiday Special 2017. And then we have the uh, Klaus Crisis and X Miss Vill. X Miss Vill. Uh, I did like that he was like uh, the old guy was like don't call it Christmas we call it Xmas yeah none of that religious I hated that I don't I don't like when people call it Xmas that bugs me happy Xmas to everybody out there um, <laughs> that's commercialized that's the whole point hey the story. two people can't die tonight Jimmy's gonna be dead they're gonna have to get a new waiter yeah no no we just toss him in the trash <laughs> um, we're requesting oh a... you're not gonna get to drink by the way he never even started making it Toss them in uh, the trash. Maybe we can request Damien next year. A Damien. I don't want to get the shit kicked out of us. Well, I'm saying a Damien person, not Damien Wayne. Oh, Gosh. okay. Head Wednesday head comics 605 at gmail.com. Hey, we need you to hire a Damien for next year. Hey, Ring the bell. Steven. We've had a uh, uh, James, Jimmy. And maybe Corey will actually show up next year. Maybe. Oh, shit. Those are some small shoes to fill. We'd be, uh, we'd be better off Find Peter Alex Parker. on Twitter at Alex Pastrello, at Garat2188 for Garrett, and find me at Marvin underscore Sogworld. Uh, Facebook.com slash Wednesday Comics Podcast. Find us on YouTube. You can see the video. There's only audio for this one, uh, but there will be a video in the future. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you, uh, what holiday issue you lived in the past. That's 605-215-1849. Let us know what you're looking forward to in the year 2018. And uh, Garrett, what else is happening in 2018? A book club, I think. Well, we have one week left uh, to read. Am I right? Two <laughs> week weeks. Two this. weeks, sorry. Two weeks left to read this. Uh, I got time the next week <laughs> after that, though. Yeah. Wednesday Comics Leave Extraordinary Gentle People proudly presents The Other Side, written by Jason Aaron with art by Cameron Stewart. Um, again, I've said this before. It's a book about the Vietnam War from the perspective of an American soldier and a Vietnamese soldier. Uh, one of Jason Aaron's first works. I think it is his first work. And so we uh, will be reviewing that the week of January 5th. Um, or we want you know, submissions via voicemail of what you thought of the book. Um, so you still have time to read it. And it's only four issues to submit a voicemail about what you thought uh, what you thought about the other side. So, Jimmy, can you get me a Diet Coke? He's dead. I'm still going to ask for Jimmy. Hey, Steve's back. Steven! Get Bro, here, Steven. where have you been? I know we got you fired. Sorry. The manager called the back. They need somebody on the double, so here he is. Steven! Quick, right. He's quick on the draw. Hey, you want a reminder? Look at Jimmy. You just threw him in the trash. Why are you on uh, your knees, Steven? Supercon 2018. That is September 28th, 29th, the trash. and 30th, <laughs> uh, 2018. Uh, I just said 2018, right? Return of the Con. When's the comics to be there on the 28th doing a live show Friday night after dark? But uh, by three day past, there all the days we'll have some. Hey, Shay Fontana's going to be there. Uh, we talked about, and also our friend Phil Hester brought to you by Wednesday Comics. Uh, let Phil know that you uh, want him to be back in that green arrow. I'm sure it's not his choice. He would be back on if you wanted to. Uh, but Supercon 2018, go to supercon.com for more information. Roots of the Swamp Thing.com. We talked about Swamp Thing earlier. They had a story in that winter. Oh, there's going to be a winter special, but this was the holiday special. Uh, looking forward to more Swamp Thing in 2018. That is my. 
hope for 2018 is more Swamp Thing. Uh, so we'll see. Go to rootsofthesswampthing.com or follow him on Twitter, DC World Swampy. Um, this is like the third time I was fell back in my chair. I don't know why it feels like it's going back too far. Uh, I don't know. I had reclining seats at the restaurant. By the way, I just realized right now in this very moment that the last couple of weeks, because I don't have it on there, that I've never told you to subscribe to the show on iTunes, uh, Google Play, Stitcher Radio. Also now, Spotify. Find us on Spotify. If you Spotify, you can uh, stream the show anytime, and you can also click to download the episode on there. So if you're ever out and about at a gym doing some CrossFit, pop in Spotify, listen to Wednesday Comics. Um, I refuse to let you listen to us while you do CrossFit. Gary, do you want to limit the market like that? Yeah, I would love to. All right. <laughs> I would love. Don't worry, there's room in that dumpster for two. Okay. You know, another, we're, this is basically the last episode we'll talk about 2017 next week. I will talk about some comics, but next week we're going to talk about looking forward 2018. Uh, speaking of looking forward, uh, I just remembered tomorrow. If you're hearing this right now on Saturday, the 24th, nope, 23rd. 23rd. I'm, I'm, I'm correct. Um, what's that, Stephen? I'm literally talking about it. Uh, the issue, we're going to have a new uh, comic come out. Comic come out. New podcast, show. new show come out. I'll tell you, I actually will tell you right here. If you're listening to this, if you've got this far, you get the exclusive scoop. Uh, tomorrow we have an issue called, uh, or a podcast coming out called uh, Wednesday Comics Bl- uh, Back Matter. Jeez, man. <laughs> you need to slow matter. down. You're missing some words. <laughs> I just killed the man. You know what that Do you does? want me to take over? <laughs> oh, Alex, Alex, take over for... Uh, he can't do it either. Jeez, we're all dying here. <laughs> Wednesday Comics Back Matter. Uh, show about three good-looking individuals talking about whatever we want. And this year, it happens to be Christmas. What a horrible way to pitch it. But you got to talk issue, about it. What? At least I can say the name in of our back, show. In the Back Matter in Comics, Black Matter. They, tell you more about, <laughs> they tell you more about the creator. So we have a show where you're going to learn more about the three of us. So we have a show coming out. On Christmas Eve, about Christmas. Uh, if you listen to it in the first like 10, uh, 10 minutes, we talk about Christmas movies, and we act like that's all we're going to talk about. We don't. We talk about Christmas throughout the whole. Christmas is the theme of episode. The um, you don't know any. You don't have to know anything about comics. So go ahead and uh, listen to that. Share it with your friends and family. Play it around the campfire, as they oh call it. Oh my gosh, the fireplace. Um, to be fair, he, I think, has a fireplace, but probably has never used it. He uses it as a campfire, I guess. I just go outside and light a fire sometimes. Do you, when you make s'mores, you light the gas, right? I hate s'mores, so I wouldn't even do that. Oh, my God. To be fair, I don't like the chocolate and s'mores. I just like the marshmallow graham cracker. Yeah, Ooh, I would do we it. I just, I just eat them before I don't warm up. I just eat <laughs> marshmallows. <laughs> Gosh, these are so weird. Go ahead and uh, share that with everybody you know. Uh, that's our present to you, and our your present to us will be you sharing it. So we'll tell you more about that on social media, so follow us on all those social medias. Uh, we like to uh, give a eulogy for uh, Jimmy now. Jimmy, you're okay. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> I know. It's pretty shitty when Steven does a better job than you. Steve. Yeah, you know, steak. Come on. <laughs> uh, for Wednesday Comics, I've been Marvin. I am Alex. <laughs> you fucker. I've been Garrett, and I just want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Why don't you guys say Merry Christmas? Jeez. Hypothetically, by the way. Hypothetically, why no. wouldn't it be a Merry Christmas? Marvin the Murder. Hypothetically, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, thank you for listening. From Christmas to this Christmas, from last year's to this, uh, really support all. I mean, I'm so glad that we have an audience that listens to us. So Merry Christmas to you guys, and hope you enjoy our new show, Back Matter. Yes, Merry Christmas. Drive safe. Hopefully, the roads are good for you, and we'll see you next year. And everyone, uh, keep turning those pages.